the beautiful Alicia Fox. Spoke to you and said this, Bob, but my name's Billy. It doesn't matter what your name is. Loaded up with alcohol, more specifically vodka, whiskey, beer, tequila, more beer, more vodka, more whiskey, and more beer. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's coming in here. He's gonna puke. He's gonna puke. He's gonna puke. He's gonna puke. Three ain't enough. Now I need five. Welcome in Jim, Ryan, Matt, Tim, and intern Mark. And after tonight, none of you in this ring will ever. There's a one. There's a two. Oh! oh, wow. Welcome to Three Count Thursday, live right here on our Facebook page. It is Thursday, January 23rd, 2020. We're the podcast of the millennium, and this week we have tons to talk about, including titles changing, we're on a boat, and Hogan's anniversary. But first, make sure you check out threecountthursday.com for all of our social media, our YouTube links, our merchandise over at whatamaneuver.net. What a maneuver. Thank you. Our Patreon page at patreon.com slash three count Thursday. I think we we didn't have a topic, but I thought our pre-show post-show ended up pretty good. L-E-E-I-B-Sports.com. Not there yet. Shit. Uh, our home network is NGSCSports.com. Make sure you check them out. Uh, most weeks we are live on Lieb Sports, which is what a maneuver. L e e i b sports dot com. We are not there live this week, but the show will be up tomorrow. So make sure you give them a follow as well. But follow us on all of our social media. Make sure you uh, again check out three count Thursday dot com. We have our uh, indie uh, upcoming indie show calendar. We have all of our social media links, all of that. We have a collar and elbow brand deal. If you have ever been to the collar and elbow brand store, if you use promo code three count. The number three, the word count. Everything with us is always the number three. Um, so make sure you uh, you head over there. And whenever you use the promo code three count at collarandelbowbrand.com, you get 10% off of each and every order. Uh, so make sure you do that. Then help us out as well. Give us a, give us a little help. Give us a little help ski. If you are uh, following along on the live video, make sure you give it a like. Make sure you give it a share. We'd appreciate that. Get as many people in here as possible. Uh Maybe start a watch party. I know a couple of friends of mine, James, Tyler, and, and a few others, uh, are in here on my watch party. Hi, guys. James, so, Tyler, welcome. Um, you know, maybe if everybody starts a watch party, we'll have maybe our biggest audience ever Jim, for a live show, which we'd really appreciate We that. would appreciate that. And the rules are back in place. Oh. Tim's back in the studio. That could only mean one thing. Bad wrestling takes. Bad wrestling takes. <laughs> and the return... Tell me. Of the wheel of, of. impression. Woo-hoo! Come on, man. I don't even have any water. Wheel of. You don't have any water. I'll squirt you with mine. Oh, heck yeah. There you go. Heck yeah. All now, right. Now, Maybe we can do this thing. The rules now. of wheel of impressions are simple. The moments we climb over 15 or 20, whatever the five increment is, live viewers in the group chat and uh, in, in the watch parties, we spin the wheel of impressions and Tim gives us one of the impressions for a worked minute. A Royal Rumble minute. It's it's a Royal Rumble minute. It depends on how well the segment's going. We may go Speaking over. Speaking of which, I was talking to a guy about the Rumble. Is it ninety seconds or two minutes? It's. Is it thirty man? Right. Typically. So I think it's ninety seconds. I think yeah, it's they, thirty man, ninety of, seconds. They've held on to ninety seconds, but the, ninety seconds. A, according to Paul Heyman's promos, it is at assigned intervals. Okay, so it is. You At, are 90 seconds, you are 60 seconds, you are 2 Charlie minutes. Charlie says 90. It's a, it's supposed to be 90. Okay. Now, I do like when the Royal Rumble used to rotate, where, like, one year it would be 60 seconds, one year it'd be 90 seconds, one year it'd be 2 minutes, and they would rotate through. Is that through. just based upon card size, I suppose? Or, like, 
how important the rumble now was. Now Scotty says two minutes. So basically, it's WWE time. That's fair. <laughs> Titan time, baby. Yeah, I, yeah I don't, again, I don't think anybody's sitting back there with a stopwatch, uh, you know, and, 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 and checking the time. I, I just don't understand. What's the number for the Wheel of Impressions, Ryan? 15. 15, my guy. Oh, so we need two more. We need two more live videos. Give it a share. Make sure we get two more people in here, and then Tim will have to give his first impression. Oh, we're dropped down to ten. Let's go, let's go. Share it away, share it away. Oh, Jim, he sounds like a goddamn auctioneer today. I'm fucking stressing me yeah, out. I'm well, sitting next to you. It's all right. I, I wore myself out. Why did I do that? It's uh, fucking hot. Right. What? What's up with you in the God hood? Damn. Why aren't you wearing a I wrestling don't know. shirt? I what thought are this you? would be Who comfortable, and it's not. And I don't know what's going on. Um, I just don't. And and here's the deal: we're not going to do our Rumble predictions tonight. That is going to be on a special episode on Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. Eastern time, right here on the Facebook page. Patreon.com slash three count Thursday. Pay for my gas money. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Tim's Tim's, you know, he's a, he's a commuter now. He lives in Kentucky. Yeah. Kentucky, Maryland. Yes. Southwest Maryland, right? Yeah. That's Something like that. Southeast. Southeast, northern west Maryland. Um, but uh, yes. Yeah, so Puxatawney, we'll, Maryland. We will be live uh, on Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern time right here to give our predictions for the Rumble. And we'll probably kind of uh, give some thoughts on Worlds Collide. From, that is uh, live I on, absolutely will. On, I plan on, on getting, Saturday night. I plan on drinking during that show. Be oh ready. Oh, boy. That's uh, during so our are you, show? Are you below the Mason-Dixon line? I don't know where the hell I am. The Mason-Dixon line is the Maryland-Pennsylvania border. I am Don't act line. like I should know that. Well, well that's fair. I'm no, Mason-Dixon. You the should line know Dixon. that. You shouldn't know where it is. <laughs> I, it's in the fucking line, Jim. Of course I would know where the Mason Dixon Right, Ryan, where's Philadelphia? Just east of uh, Lancaster. Just down 30 a bit. Just down 30 a sure, bit. Sure, okay. <laughs> um, I was talking to somebody at work who, who lived in Philly. We were just talking about this today. How, like, when you get on the turnpike, the Philly exits are, what, but 30 minutes on the turnpike? No, no. I mean, we're, like... Like the Earl... All right, so, like, the King of Prussia exits. King of Prussia is, like, an hour. On the turnpike? No, when you get to the turnpike, Jim, ain't no hour on the when turnpike. You, oh, when you get to the turnpike. Right. It's about 30 minutes once you're at the turnpike. Uh, I'd go closer to like 40, 45. Well, that's because we stop and feed our face at the fucking No, Roy stop. Rogers is on the way back. Fair. There's a Burger King on the way down. I don't. You don't need to stop you're at right. that one because I can point. get Burger King and lit it. But like, the I, I would say, but why would you not take into account the amount of time it takes to get to... To the turnpike. Because I know how to get there. So you only account for time that you don't know? That I, would, that I would plug into my GPS. And I would plug starting at the turnpike because once I get off the turnpike, those are roads that I'm not familiar See, with. See, you should be plugging it in from the start, uh, start of trip because you should not be distracted while driving. Mm. Especially on the highway. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. Scott, you're a bad person for wishing that upon us, too. Well, then Scotty or then, Scott then Charlie drives get, too fast. We get snow this weekend. But per GPS directions, either way, 45 minutes longer than half an hour. About a half an hour down 30 to get to that Philadelphia airport. But King of... No. To pick up everybody's friend, Mia Yim. (laughs) King of Prussia. (laughs) Oops. Um, All right. We got some independent shows. Uh, There's a story for the Patreon page um, Yeah, that is a story for the Patreon page. Maybe that'll be Sunday's story. Um, We need one more live view to get the uh, first wheel of impression, by the way. Take your time. Um, But we have have uh, to get up to get it because it's far away. So we have some independent shows on the calendar for this weekend. We may be having a call here in just a second uh, to talk about one of those shows and the one that is tomorrow night. But we'll uh, we'll give you this already. Tomorrow night is ACW and Rogue Women Warriors. If I were me, that is at the Reverb Nightclub in Reading, Pennsylvania, Doors are at uh, 7, bells at 7.30 on that show. It's a packed card. Ryan, we'll talk about that here in just a second. If if it's on the sh- on the call or not, because you're going to be literally on the call tomorrow for the action. Literally. Uh, and then Saturday, there are four shows in, uh, in our region uh, that I have on our calendar. The Monster Factory presents This Is War uh, at the world-famous Monster Factory in Paulsboro, New Jersey. That's at 7 o'clock. Uh, PPW, if you want to take the trip up, uh, was that 81 up to beautiful Hazleton, yes. Pennsylvania? Yes, it is absolutely frigid, frigid in the winter time. But, uh, have the, you been to Hazleton? The beautiful. wrestling is hot and heavy. 
PPW re- resolution uh, at the Holy Family Holy Family Academy. I'm hot and heavy. Why did you? We- yeah, yes, you know. are. Why did you wear a sweatshirt? I don't know. It's not. Do a you have an undershirt choice. on. Like a I don't. I don't. Oh, oh you're no. just. Well, just you've here. always wanted to do a show topless. It's, we're gonna be close, folks. Um, just wear your hoodie and zip it up. Take this shirt off. And then just wear the hoodie zipped up. Oh, see, there you oh, go. That's not a bad thing. Um, go over there. Look at this thing. Go over there and get changed no, like a fine. man. Ryan's not. Ryan's not ashamed. If he's gonna, if he's gonna, if he's gonna go shirtless or change shirts, he's just gonna do it. But uh, it's PPW resolution uh, Saturday at the Holy Family Academy in Hazleton, PA. Doors and meet and greet start at five. Bell time is at seven. Yeah, if you have not been up to uh, PPW, you need to get up there. Uh, be it this weekend or not. Um, they, they are a great company, lots of great action. It should be this weekend because there's a special raffle this weekend there where is, you can get right. a very special one of a kind, I believe. Yes. PPW championship belt fleece throw. Yes. With a photograph from the famous Frank Boris He's with us in the, uh, in the live video tonight. You can, you can pick up raffle tickets. For that this weekend, they're if, raffling it this weekend. If you, if you, uh, who can well, I give my money to? For you that? can Hold Netflix on. and chill with the PPW you Championship can. draped you over absolutely you. Absolutely can. Uh, if you are a follower of our Facebook page, uh, you would have seen this photograph. You would have as our cover photo. Uh, just uh, about a little. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just about over a week ago. So waiting um, for that. So you know that's uh, that is a great opportunity as well. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a good time there. Uh, if you're in New Jersey, H to H two O Wrestling Sub Training and Violence Six 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 at the H two O Wrestling Center. Or in, if in your, your New New Jersey, I'm sorry, <laughs> in Williamstown, New Jersey, uh, doors at seven. Bell time is uh, is at eight. And then also, if you are in Maryland, Adrenaline Wrestling prevents presents viral uh, on Saturday at the American Legion Post ninety one in Cambridge, Maryland. Doors are at six thirty and Bell is at seven. Is that the PM. one subtitled "Funny Equals Money"? Pa- I, think I think so. That's the one with like Gilbert and James Ellsworth and yes. Joey Ryan. Yes, and, yes, uh, yes. I believe so. The oh. other guy that does the YouTube videos. What was his name? You know who? Superhuman. Uh, Grimm's Toy Show. Superhuman and Grimm's Toy Show. Yeah, it's yeah. what a what a lineup. A uh, quick side story. Uh-huh. I live twenty minutes away from the flea market that does MCW stuff. Well, oh, you're, that's, oh, that's good to where know. you're at. Son of a bitch. Literally, I turn out of my house, In I Yapa, turn Maryland. left, and I just stay straight on that road for about 20 Have you been to Joppa, minutes. Maryland this I, time of dude, year, Jim? I, is it beautiful? No. No, no not <laughs> Joppa, Maryland. Uh, welcome in Phil. I see a couple other people in the video there. Scotty says, either. what's worse, uh, wrestling Twitter or political Twitter? Yes. <laughs> Ding. Uh, political Twitter every day. Uh, yes, both. Uh, both. I'm, both, I'm more connected to wrestling Twitter. Both are full of people who don't follow everything but think they know everything, and they're just That's fair. talking about That's it. That's fair. Like, look. You are fake news. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we have a soundboard for things like this, Jim. Well, I know, but that's also where our phone line is, and I'm afraid to unmute. Don't be afraid, Jim. Because what Let hap- the hate flow. What happens if we get a call, then we have the phone ringing on the, on the thing? Look yep. at this photograph. I'm gonna, Let's do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the phone line for like two more minutes. And then if, if it doesn't happen, then we'll have the soundboard. How about that? Um, but yeah, I think, I think both... You do it, you coward. Res- wrestling Twitter and political Twitter have uh, the absolute scum of the earth. Um, they okay. also have very good and informative people, like your friends at Three Count Thursday. Hey. Um, so, you know, pick and choose. Uh, this is what I always say, whether it's... Sports media, political, uh, wrestling, whatever. Um, just pick and choose. If you don't like somebody, unfollow them. If you still get their shit and you don't like it, block them. Mute them. It's really that easy. Hey, man. Muting? There's one person on Twitter. Have you blocked anybody, Tim? I've, I have blocked some spam. Okay, but I mean, have you blocked A like... A person? Yeah. No. I will mute people. Um... I muted one guy. Um, we know who he is. Um, more specifically, uh, we uh, I I definitely mute uh, I muted him more so for his live commentary of a wrestling buddy. Okay. Uh, but yeah, 
I, uh, my buddy. Now, here's another question. If you mute people, will you ever go back and unmute? Or once they're muted, are they, are they gone? So you unmute. If you mute them, you don't see them. But, like, you also can't look them up. I think you can. No. You can go on Twitter and, and look you up. You have to unmute them. You can. I think you can find on your on your account settings. Like I'm pulling myself up. Oh, here, here we go. He's who do you have it up. muted? Look, look for someone specifically who you have. Oh muted. man, my screen's going all crazy. Oh, stop it! Oh, seizures. Um, privacy and safety. It's not funny. We don't make fun of seizures around here. Protect your tweet. I yeah, right here. You go <laughs> muted accounts. Uh huh. So there's Jesus all the. Jesus oh, Christ! There's, him. there's all the accounts I muted. What okay. a bitch! Why yeah, are you I muting don't... them all. Right, but now try to go into one of the profiles. Oh, this guy. It's right yeah, there. he's not blocked. And then all you have to do is click unmute. Right. Yeah. So I don't I don't care. So That's you, what I'm you, saying. You like, just mute all Philadelphia fans? Is that what that is? Like literally every – they're all AEW and Philadelphia Eagle fans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. Yep, Philly, Philly guy, Philly guy. AEW is right. better. There's yeah. Britt Baker. There's, <laughs> right, yeah, all of them. They're all. They're oh, all wow. and I'm sorry at at Jr's barbecue. You, like you, right. you know, you're you, now you, whoa. I'm kidding. I, that, that, that he is not. That's not very nice. He is not muted. Um, all right, I think. See, this is why. This is why I. Uh, I waited, Ryan, because I think we have a guest. Yeah, Jim, he messaged me, hey, can I call in? And I said, yeah, let's okay, do this. Okay, so why don't you tell so us? So don't act surprised when they call you. Why don't like, you tell us? <laughs> don't Jim, us. you upset me now. I'm going to mute you. Don't mute me. You're going to mute our caller by accident. I'm not going to mute the caller. Who so is the caller? We have, What's your name and where you're have, from? <laughs> what got you into pro wrestling, pal? Uh, so who we have What's on the phone is, uh, is Tate Hammer. Tate was ousted. Out of Atomic Championship Wrestling, very recently, last show, found some footage, exposed that footage in the Rose Room with Felicia Rose, and I feel like he's kind of back in the saddle here at ACW. I'm not even sure okay, well, where let's... Tate stands in his own company, but we have Tate Hammer on the line. Tate, welcome in. Nope, we don't have Tate on the line. We certainly do not. How are you guys doing? Hey, there he is. Go. We got Tate on the line. Yeah, there was like a hiccup there or something going on. I heard you guys and then like talked and there was nothing. You so, know what? Yeah. It is technology. How are you tonight, man? Uh, pretty good. How are you guys doing? We are doing well. Um, let's start off first by saying, wh where do you stand within your own company right now? Uh, I'm, I'm back in the saddle. I mean, I guess I, I, I was always the owner, but like had no say is what was going on. You know, the, the day, to, day by day was... Uh, run by the good old commissioner and uh you know james fraser and the board of directors and all those good people were uh, taking care of it so i kind of had an easy life there for a little bit you know not having to deal with pro wrestling but you know what gotta love pro wrestling i'm back you're back into thing. it you put you put everybody kind of back in their spot james is back at the commentary table you, you sat lee down and you pushed him to the side you said I got this now. You're good pushed to go. Pushed him to the side. I didn't mean like that. Pushed him to the Jim, side, Ryan. Jim, I didn't mean Jesus. it. You're an asshole. I didn't mean it like Jesus. that. Jesus. <laughs> you said it, Ryan. I, 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 hope, I hope he's in your guys' chat room right now discussing you out. That's, I oh, hope he's not. Oh, God, Ryan. I hope he's not. Yeah. That's not what I want. Axel Fox is in our chat room right now. What's up, Axel? Um, referee. Does he know how to count to three yet? He doesn't know how to count to three. We're still struggling with that. Um, most of his matches just end in DQ. But he'll, he'll get there. He'll get there. Um, this Saturday, Tate, we're, we're presenting Atomic Championship it, Wrestling. It's, it's not Saturday. It's Friday. Oh, shit. It's tomorrow night. I, I get so used to promoting shows on Saturday. So tomorrow night, Friday night, tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Friday night. Tomorrow. If I Were Me, presented up at Club Reverb, Reading, Pennsylvania. Correct. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, Friday nights are... Uh, you know, every, just like you just said, you're always used to promoting shows Saturday because Friday nights are rough. You know, uh, as a promoter, Friday nights are real rough. You don't know if you're going to have five people there, you're going to have 500 people there. You know, um, it's always it's always iffy people, you know, want to get their grocery shopping done and want to go out to dinner and they want to do something with their kids or their school stuff going on, you know. Uh, and especially this time of year, it's a little rough out there, you know. People recovering from Christmas, you know, people moving south to go stay in the warmth. So, um, you know, we're going to try to, uh, you know, we have a crazy show lined up. I mean, it's been all over 
social media, all over our website, like all over everywhere. Um, you know, it's it, it's a crazy show lined up. You know, tomorrow night, like everybody's talking about, it's the the debut of Mike Quackenbush in Atomic Championship Wrestling. He's coming back home to his hometown, and uh, you know, it's a huge thing. Yeah, it is. It is a big deal. Tim, you're pretty familiar with Quack. Yeah, that's that's actually a really big treat. People who who don't normally uh, come out to ACW, you have a a even more of a reason to make the trip to Club Reverb tomorrow night. Uh, the Master of a Thousand Holds, Mike Quackenbush, making a rare appearance in this time of his career uh, in tag team action. That's going to be a phenomenal matchup. He's Mike Quackenbush is at the point in his career where he doesn't. He, he's being very, very selective with the matchups that he is he is allowing himself to be in. So if he's de- if he's decided that this this is a opportunity for him, there has to be a reason for it, and, and it's, it's he's definitely a gem, a jewel to watch. Yeah, Mike Mike Mike's uh, always like super upfront. Like I've been trying for years to get Mike to come to come in, and he's like, you know, Mike Wackenbush wrestles you know between four or five, maybe six times at most a year. Uh, most most years so he's just like you know hey he's like you know he's like let's do this this time so you know it was, you know i jumped on the opportunity you know there's an awesome tag team match uh you know tomorrow night with them guys and uh it should be a treat you know everybody's always like hey let's see the big name let's see the big name you know let's get the big guys you know you know or the guys who are on tv you know you know here's a guy who can like super super great wrestler like we're probably one of the best out there right now and uh you know, hopefully people will come and appreciate the actual in-ring wrestling of these guys tomorrow night because they are they are absolutely amazing. Absolutely, way to way to. Yeah, and, and here's the thing too is is like you know I know it's it's a Friday night it might be somewhat different out of the routine, but guess what? Like Reverb, you know they they have a bar there. You know you can get food there, and what better than than to come out uh, support some great local talent, uh, some of the best talent you know it, it, on the independent scene. So make sure you, you get out, spend the money, support these people. They're putting their body, the bodies and everything on the line for you uh, to, to put on a good show. And, and, and you know, we always, we always say it on this show. When it comes down to independent wrestling, like, yeah, everybody wants to be like, oh, I want to go see a WWE show. Or I want to go see AW. Or I want to see Ring of Honor. But like, here's the thing. Like, the, 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 the guys and girls who are on those shows probably started somewhere right. uh, on an independent company like this. And you're going to spend... You know, you're going to spend a little bit of money, but you're going to get the opportunity to meet these people, talk to these people, interact with them one on one, face to face, take pictures, get autographs, stuff like that. So that, you know, down the road, when those people get to those bigger places, you can go, you know what? Th- they deserve it because they're good people. I've met them. Right. So get out and enjoy the show. They have food there. Like, you don't have to stop for dinner somewhere else. You don't have to stop for drinks somewhere else. Get it. Yeah. And independent wrestling is one of those places, it's one of those avenues where you get a different look at wrestling than you normally do from your Monday, your Wednesday, and your Friday nights watching television. You get a better seat at an independent show. You get a better look at the action that's in front of you at these independent promotions uh, that you you wouldn't get anywhere else unless you want to fork over three bills, three and a half. Like, it's it's a lot. So to get the quality you get at – such an affordable price and in a wonderful location like Club Reverb, right. you, you can't go wrong. Right, Tate, let's talk about tickets. Are tickets going to be available tomorrow at the door? Yeah, there's, there's about 15 front row tickets left. Uh, they're, they're 25 bucks. Uh, they'll be available at the door. General Missions, uh, we got a bunch of them left. You know, as everybody knows, they put the bar high tops out there, so there'll be plenty of room for General Mission tickets. Uh, the place holds thousands of people, so, um, you know, it's uh, it, it'll be a good thing. Uh, General Missions are $20 now. The pre-sale's over. Um, just ended at nine o'clock, you know, and, and you know what, there are current TV stars on the show, you know, tomorrow night, Jenny Rose from ring of honors there. Absolutely. And v- Vita, Vita Von Starr just debuted with ring of honor as well. She's, she's, she's on the show tomorrow night. Right. She's with so, uh, in, in Vinnie Marcellia's uh, club group, if you will. Yeah. So yeah. And like, like, yeah. like Jim said, this is somebody that we've had at, at ACW for quite a while wrestling in, in the rogue ranks that has now broken into ring of honor. And, like, the sky will be the limit for Vita Von Starr. Um, we talked about Mike Quackenbush already. He's tagging with Zero, taking on Ricky, Ricky South and uh, Devontes. And, again, I think, um, mm-hmm. Tim, you're pretty familiar with all those guys from that Chikara circle. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, Zero recently uh, coming back to the Chikara ranks. Uh, Ricky South, I believe, just won the Young Lions Cup. 
and uh, Devontae is a member of a group called the Crucible. Uh, to give you a little bit about the Crucible, they are trainees from the Wrestle Factory who aren't necessarily Wrestle Factory trainees, and their mission is to win matches in three minutes. That's what they got to do: three minutes or less. That's it. They, they, like if they don't, if they do not win a match in three minutes, it's considered a failure, even if they get the W. There it is. Uh, we have General Erica, Kiesel. Erica, Erica Lee's also there now too. She's also a Shakar. Uh, she's at the Wrestle Factory. Yeah, she's back tomorrow night as well. Yes, she is. Absolutely great call. Uh, she's taking on Megan Mason. Um, Mason, who just debuted at our last show uh, when she took on Charlie Cruel. Um, Charlie Cruel picked up the victory, kind of propelling her career in Rogue. Charlie Cruel taking on <laughs> Lena Lennox for the uh, Rogue Women's Championship tomorrow night. Club Reverb. Again, tickets at the door. Take You said $20 general admission, 25 ringside? Correct. Um. We also have Bones taking on Scotty Jeffries. That's one of Jim's favorites. He's a big Scotty Jeffries fan. Sure. That is an old school Texas bull rope match, too. So that, that is. That should be, uh, yeah, winner's got to touch all four corners, you know, the, and this bull rope is uh, quite insane. It, 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 you're going you're gonna to be feeling them anywhere you're sitting in the building. There's no quite sound like the sound of a Texas bull rope uh, that, that, uh, that clang of the the yes, bell yeah. right across uh-huh. somebody's noggin. Man, and that, that, that bull rope across like a bare back. Oof. Could could yeah. literally I mean, break Scotty Jeffries. That's a normal well, Friday night. Be well you, city for somebody. That's that, right. That will be the first time that we've ever seen, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tate, probably the first time we've seen Scotty Jeffries in the ring with a belt that could hold his pants up. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's a conversation you need to have with Scotty Jeffries. That's, oh, okay, okay. I'll bring that up uh, tomorrow. We have... Uh, Jack Hershey battling Wesley Jack Anor in the ACW Cruiserweight uh, Championship Pixar. Uh, yep. Andy Hedder again returning. Um, I think this is his third or fourth show with us. Great to see Andy Hedder back taking on. And, um, Andy Hedder, a lot of people don't know, but Andy Hedder, uh, he he he, he kind of like uh, after he was a Chicago guy originally as well. He um, he came to us originally in 2006, and he was with us from 2006 to about 2010, and then we took a little bit of a break because you know there was he kind of pretty much did everything he could do here. You know, now there's all new faces, all new talent. He's back, you know, and he's he's tearing it up. He absolutely is. It's great to see him. Johnny Moran coming back to us. I, I Correct me if I'm wrong, the last time we saw Johnny Moran, he was in tag team to a- action. No, he, he wrestled at um, Game Changer World for us in Allentown. Uh, I'm not sure if you were at that show or not, but he did a, he did a singles match up there and picked up a W. Um, oh, okay. But right. yeah, this is his first time back in about a year. Yeah, I think I've missed one show in like four years, and it was that Game Changer show. Um, so that that would be the one, yeah. Um, we have the wonderful, our favorite, Felicia Rose coming back to us. She's hosting a Rose Room. Um, do you know who, who she's calling out, Tate? Do you know what's going to be the, the guest of honor there? I'll, I'll leave it out. It, it, it's, 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 a, it's a rogue. It's a rogue. It's a rogue star. We'll leave that out All there. All right. Rogue star. All right. Rogue star. Rogue mm-hmm. star. Mm-hmm. Felicia Rose in the Rose Room. Did I mention there's an open? There's a bar there. There is a bar. A bar Alcohol there. is available. Alcohol is flowing. It's uh, it's my Extend favorite thing happy hour to the... to go there. Yeah, and I and I will have a Captain and Coke before we get started. And I feel like that ups yeah. my game as a commentator. I, I'm probably it just... need about you know ten Captain and Cokes before the show even gets going tomorrow with all the stress of that. Running sounds that. like my kind of Friday. Yeah, 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 that sounds like a promoter promoter Friday. I don't drink either, but you know. Hey. Maybe, maybe yeah, we'll, we'll, the first for everything. <laughs> I I hear you. Uh, we have kind of the undercard a little bit. We have uh, Bobby Kruger taking on Saren Faust. These guys have been a thorn That's in each other's side. Tearing it up here lately. Uh, Saren, Saren Faust is an oddball, but he's uh, he's always an interesting guy to watch. He is. He's he's weird as shit. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, <laughs> General Kiesel taking on Leo Sweet. And then our main Correct. event, I believe the the the. I believe it'll be the main event of the night. Maybe not, um, but it looks like the ACW Heavyweight Championship match. Bobby, or I'm sorry, uh, Stockade taking on Bro Keller, taking on Dame in a three way dance. That should be absolutely amazing. Three of the most talented guys out there right now that aren't signed, and uh, I mean everybody knows you know the, the long feud between Bro Keller and Dame. Now Stockade's been calling them out, so, you know, it should be absolutely amazing. And if you've not seen Stockade 
in a year or so. The guy has lost a ton of weight. He's picked his game up. He's faster than he's ever been, probably stronger than he's ever been. So great to see uh, Stockade get that nod in this championship match. Stockade, Bro Keller, Dame, heavyweight championship on the line. Tate, give us again the rundown of tickets, um, where they can buy them at the door, and where we're going to be at tomorrow night. Tickets are only available at the door at this point. Uh, there's like 15 front row left. I believe it was the last count. I was just going through them before uh, before we got on the phone. Um, yeah, there you are. There are 25 at the door. Uh, general admission are 20. Uh, online pre sales over. The only way you can get them is come to the show tomorrow night and get them at the door. Um, it's uh, 1402 Ninth Street in Reading, Pennsylvania. It's uh, Club Reverb. That's a great venue. It's huge. It's roomy. You got plenty of room. There's beer. There's food. You know, it's 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 all it's all decked out. Uh, any info you need, uh, there there was a problem with our with our with our poster. Um, Facebook, if you see the poster in person, it's amazing. But Facebook um, totally kills the resolution and made it all weird looking. Um, and there wasn't enough time to get another one out. And uh, to be honest, all the time and artwork that was put into that thing is just insane. They will actually be hanging all over the building tomorrow night because it was the most talked about topic on Facebook for a couple of days. Um, but, um, yeah, it's going to be a great time. Uh, www.atomicprowrestling.com has all the information, directions, all that good stuff is all on there. I do have two things for you guys, though, too. Oh. Since I'm on here and I don't do many of these, so I'm going to uh, kind of throw this throw this out there. Um, in the next, I'm going to say two weeks, two weeks or less, we're going to announce our new building. Ooh. All we're right. Gonna, all that good stuff. Uh, it's amazing. So, um there, there's uh, there's two places that have been in limbo and, you know, getting approvals and all that stuff that's throwing us way off time frame wise. But uh, we will be continuing going to the reverb as well. So uh, we're also looking forward to I'll drop this one now because everybody's been waiting for it. We are in talks with the building to come into the city of Lancaster and be running a monthly show in Lancaster as well. So wrestling will be returning to Lancaster this year. Wow, uh, on, it's on been, a more permanent basis. It has um, been a while, far too long. It has been far too long yeah. since the Red Rose City yes. uh, has has and seen the, professional wrestling. The the second thing is we're hoping again within the next two weeks, maybe even less, um, that the the debut of the YouTube show uh, Apocalypse will be debuting as well, which will be. All kinds of craziness. It, uh, it, it's been fun putting it together. It's been crazy putting it together, and uh, it'll be it'll be debuting too. That'll be matches, stuff that you don't see at the shows that's going on, all kinds of stuff. There's a um, there's a studio been fully built uh, to, get to to do this too as well. So there's an in studio, um, all kinds of crazy stuff. It's it's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, the YouTube thing is uh, is blowing up pretty good for us right now. There's Jordan Grace and Angelina Love flying all around for free. Um, all kinds of matches that we've been putting up there. Subscribe to the subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't ask me what it is, but it's it's on the Atomic page everywhere. It's on the Road page everywhere. Um, yeah, check it out. We're also on the we have the Pivot Chair, but that's uh, that's pretty much it. You know, um, hope to see everybody tomorrow night and uh, you know come out and support any wrestling. All right, Tate. We thank you so much, man. And, and we'll uh, we'll grab that link and we'll make sure it gets up on our website. Yeah, we, we put uh, some links well, of yeah. the of the free wrestling. We we do. Uh, a free wrestling post every once in a while, and I know we've linked shows from lo- usually the local independent areas, but uh, the next one, I'll throw one up tomorrow for Free Wrestling Friday, and, and we'll link a show. Uh, or we'll link, we'll link that Jordan Grace, Angelina Love match you were talking about. Oh, awesome. We appreciate it. Good deal. Thank you, Tate. We will see you tomorrow yep. night. Club Reverb. Uh, bell time again, 7.30? 7.30. Doors at 7. Doors at 7, 7.30. Right. Whenever the doc shows up, bell time. All right. Sounds good, Tate. We'll talk yeah. to you soon, man. Hey, thanks for having us on, and uh, you know you guys enjoy the rest of your show. Have a good night. Sounds I appreciate good. it, Thank bud. You, so again, thanks for Tate for calling in, and uh, yeah, get out and support independent wrestling. Like I said, you can always what go to can always go to our website threecountthursday.com, and we have the upcoming independent shows tab, and that has our uh, our schedule shows we're either going to be at working or ones that we just endorse. So uh, make sure you check that out. Now, what was going on in the group chat? I was busy. Well, we got uh, we got a, a re- rivalry ri- rivalry renewed. Wanders in here down here. It's uh, it, it, the win- first off the winner. Andy the winner, Weinberg. Andy Weinberg. I'm sorry, I think I'm in okay standings with Andy. I know. I'm just making sure right. it stays that way. Of the, Podcast of oh, the so, year. So much. Thank you for that, yeah. Tim. I don't think you've gotten along with Andy all that time. Are you involved in this? 
New Year, new me, man. I'm, okay. I'm here. I'm here on. Tim's, I'm here to. Tim's. Tim's just. I'm a get along guy for now. Tim's burying the hatchet. Yeah. But uh, a, the winner, Andy Weinberg, and, uh, and, and our on our friend Rob Noxious. Right. There's lots. Of- is uh, having a little back and forth there. <laughs> so I don't. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm not a booker. I'm not a promoter. But you know, if wrestling's returning to Lancaster. We know these guys have mixed it up in Lancaster before. That's all I know. So they have, uh, you know, um, you know, maybe you know, wish upon a star or you know, find a shooting star or throw a penny in a well or something. Uh, Jim, I don't know uh, what the hell you're I, talking about. I don't know. It's, it's been a long week. Who wish <laughs> upon a penny when, in a when you wish upon a penny in a well and uh, get some water? Wish and, upon a penny. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, hey Bob and a booby. Uh, you know, so just um, square pizza. <laughs> uh, patreoncom slash three count Thursday. Um, but yeah, make sure you, uh, you get out and support independent wrestling. Um, so we, uh, and again, if you're in the live video, give it a like, give it a share, uh, get, get some active comments here, uh, as we, uh, as we go th- about the show. Um, obviously this weekend kicks off WrestleMania season, but, uh, and, and with that, uh, I, I saw some buzz this week and a few, uh, wrestling media, uh, individuals had, had put out there that there's some buzz among the uh you know among the wrestling world the WWE world that they are considering making WrestleMania a two day event next year um so uh, the the proposal um that that I had read would be a uh, 4 hour show on Saturday night and a 4 hour show on Sunday night yes um so I put out there as our uh, question of the week it's been a little while since we did a question of the week, and I put it out there, um, are you pro or con on the uh, on the two day WrestleMania? Obviously, Wrestle Kingdom this year was yes. a uh, was a two day event. We had some uh, we had some responses, but we'll, we'll we'll pass it around here uh, before we uh, before we get to some of the the listener responses. Uh, Ryan, immediately you threw up a thumbs down on yes. This. What is the what was my in, uh, response on there? Uh, yeah, there it was. There's a GIF that just says one day. One day. It is a spectacle unlike anything I've ever attended before. Mm-hmm. That you, you didn't even bother me how long it was. It didn't bother me that the sunset in beautiful East Rutherford, East New Jersey. East Rutherford, New Jersey. In the shadow of New York. In the shadow of New <laughs> Let's York. Let's be honest. The, the, it's the armpit of New York, it I believe. It absolutely is. It didn't bother me that I was there forever. It didn't bother you me. You literally that, just got home. It didn't bother me that my fat ass barely didn't fit in the seats. That, well, that's that, that's like, not East Rutherford's fault. We're we're big guys. You understand sitting in a seat in a sports seat and you get the fucking shaky leg. Oh yeah, because yeah. Because your thighs have and, to be together. Yeah, your yep, hi- your you hips start to go numb a little bit. Y'all get it. You get the tingles. You get the tingles real and not bad. in a good way. Not in a good way. You stand up. You turn around. You sit back down. You're popping up to cheer just because you need to get fucking right. You're doing. You're doing the. Your you're doing the hokey pokey. None of that was a problem to me because it was a spectacle unlike anything I've ever seen before. WrestleMania, big long ass fucking day, fucking night. Leave it one day. Tim, now I believe I saw a, a thumbs up from the Tim delegation. We as a wrestling collective fan base are the one people. Who want to eat our cake and eat it too? We're the most complaining about a lot of wrestling people. Wait, did ever. you just say eat our cake and eat it too? Have have our cake and eat it too. Okay, hey, I like to eat my cake and eat I it. I feel too. like I, yeah. I never hear so many wrestling fans whine and complain about how there's too much wrestling and how wrestling events are too long. WrestleMania is six, seven. WrestleMania will be over on Tuesday. Uh. Huh? Da, 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 da. Like, first of all, you're all grown adults. You know, but you know the drill by now. This isn't the first WrestleMania that's going to go into twelve to midnight. So budget your time accordingly. If you haven't already taken the Monday after WrestleMania off, shame on you, a patui. Shameless. Second you. of all, in a business perspective, you th- you think if the WWE could charge twice for WrestleMania and double gates, uh. They're not going to do it. Of course they would. It's going to be great. Well, that you're... Also, it gives more meaning to the main event title matches. Because you, would have, because you won't have that same fatigue. 
And you also wouldn't have the SmackDown, the, the WWE World Championship headlining at 9 p.m. and then the in, the Universal Championship headlining at 11.30. It would okay. be okay. one's headlining Saturday night and one's headlining Sunday night. So now they're going to have to do a four night, though, because you got to get the women to main event as well. No. I know. But, no, I, I do see what you're saying. Like, here's the thing. I, I'm... I mean, bottom line is, if they make it two days, um, then we're going to have a two-day event and a two-day watch party and all of that. And the, um, the crazy thing, though, is two. Res- WrestleMania this year is already going to run into the issue of, well, WWE, for that matter, is running into the issue of so many events in w- WrestleMania week. Their own events. Yes. So this year. Well, let's let me give you another number too, talking about events in general for WrestleMania weekend. But just WWE alone, Monday's Raw, Sunday's WrestleMania, Saturday's Takeover, Friday's SmackDown, Thursday is the Hall of Fame. So right there, if you have a second night of WrestleMania, NXT now gets bumped to what? Wednesday? Well, I, I, and they do takeover doing, on they're Wednesday? They're not doing takeovers. I would imagine that under this scenario, NXT anymore. gets they absorbed. Are. This year, there's a takeover WrestleMania weekend. Oh, this year there takeover is. Takeover Tampa. Yes, yeah. there is a takeover Tampa. Because there's not a takeover there's, Royal there's Rumble. There's not a takeover. Well, there is. It's called Worlds Collide. Uh, right. But there's takeover Portland. There's takeover Portland, which mm-hmm. is its own event. Because they're trying to do a domestic pay-per-view in February while they go over to, to Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia in February. Oh, so that's the only reason was Takeover Portland. Yes, they can. They're doing a domestic show sense. But, to make money. But I, I here the, the at least my thought would be is if you if you make if you make WrestleMania a two day event, would would NXT get absorbed into Wrestle into WrestleMania? I mean, you've seen them already defeat Raw and SmackDown on Survivor Series. Like they are no longer just developmental; they are a third brand. Um, you know, when Finn Balor's going to NXT and you have people going from NXT to Raw and SmackDown, like, yeah, so I, I, I would think in this scenario, um, NXT matches would get absorbed onto the main roster product. You know? I'd like to think that, but how many NXT people are scheduled for the Royal Rumble this year? Uh, uh one and a half. Zero. Well, there's 25 announced on a 30 man Royal Rumble and there is zero. And NXT there's announced. five women announced and... That's it. That is also correct. So, but NXT had should 20. be part of this, correct? They should be. But I mean, it should is... be 10, 10, and 10. 10 Raw, You're 10 SmackDown, wrong. 10 NXT. Instead, it's the entire Monday Night Raw roster with a <laughs> smattering of SmackDown people and call it good. Maybe Monday we'll roll around and we'll see NXT invade and knock some of those people maybe out. Maybe card subject so. to change. And maybe maybe it should be a 40-man rumble then. Uh, to me, it with should one be a minute, 40 With one-minute interval. I think 30 is the right number. I think that if you make it 30, you get qual- – they need to make qualifying for the Royal Rumble – Something like qualifying for the King of the Ring. There's a limited number of spots. What if was you, that word? Qualifying. <laughs> it's <laughs> eat my dick. <laughs> and so Johnny Ace is a piece of shit. Um, but, but you, if you put the pre, put the perspective, you put the onus on. There's ten slots for the Royal Rumble for Raw. Okay. The Intercontinental yeah. Champion gets a spot. The Tag Champions get a spot. So then there's seven spots left. Seven spots open for anyone. I don't know, man. I don't like automatic bids. I do. It's like the college football playoff. There should be no automatic You know bids. what? If you want a goddamn bid, join a fucking conference. <laughs> huddle, but, up, but, huddle Up Podcast. But, Tuesday nights on Facebook.com slash Huddle Up Podcast. Even so. Like, it's wrestling. It's not... It's not sport. So, like... Tell Tony Khan that. Okay. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> instead of just people saying, oh, I declare this, I declare for the Royal Rumble, I declare for the Royal Rumble, like, 
if everybody, maybe I'll declare for the if Royal everybody Rumble. on Monday Night Raw just we came out and said we declare for the Royal Rumble, that's thirty spots. That's all gone. Sorry. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No, I think there should you know I think there should be some degree of 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 qualification or you yeah. know. Um, but here's the thing: if, if WrestleMania goes two nights, then we're I'm going to watch both nights. I prefer it on one day, like. You know, I, I've never seen the Super Bowl get stopped at halftime and go, hey, we're going to finish tomorrow. Like, and I get I'm being purposely facetious with that. Right. But like, <laughs> it's not sports. <laughs> well, no, it's because. Right. That'll be all out to the two day one with a halftime and a, no, there it is, and a right. marching band and because all that. Because the Super Bowl is one game. WrestleMania right. is 12 games. No, WrestleMania is 12 games. matches on one show. Right. Where, whereas the Super Bowl show. is four quarters in one game. Oh, so we can break it up to four nights. Yeah, I mean, just saying. But no, like, here's the thing. If it's two nights, I prefer it one night. I don't care how long it is. Like I said, this this year, I had some weird fucking cold or flu or something. I was here by myself, and I was Herpes. still like I was still engaged. Yeah, look, man, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Um but like, don't they make medicine clear? That I, I I wasn't part of I you know I didn't go to anybody's house for a watch party. Obviously Ryan was at the show. Like, I I was still engaged. I was still engaged with the show. I didn't. I wasn't bored. I didn't fall asleep. Like, none of that. Like, and guess what? I I haven't worked the day after WrestleMania or the day after the Super Bowl in close to a decade. Why? Because I'm an adult and I can <laughs> s- select PTO time. Because I saw some article today I on Bleacher Report. Love that you're like. I don't go to work the day after I watch professional wrestling because I'm an adult. You're and goddamn you're right. right. And because I, I cannot go to work whenever I want to take a PTO day. If I, I want to take a be PTO day to hear that. on June 11th, I'll fucking do it because I'm an, I, I'm an adult and I can take time off. It's also the older we get, the harder it is to stay up past like 11. You are- G damn right. <laughs> I'm, up, I'm up to almost 3 a.m. every day, so it doesn't really matter. Well, you also may have a sleeping problem. Eh, maybe. I mean, I'm up late too, but it's they have to wake up and function right away. Is the right. Well, exactly. Like I don't. I can. I can. If I have to wake up, I can wake up. But in an ideal world for me, I am very much like Garfield. My day shouldn't start until like 11 o'clock. Yeah. Complete sidebar though. The the I saw the, this thing on Bleacher Report on you. about a kid who's like starting an online pe- petition. To uh, make Super Bowl go to Saturday? No, stop it! Oh. Like adult, let's not don't knock the table over. We're, we're um, losing it. Watch the, out, is Kim Lemon okay? Kim she, Lemon's fine. Screw Kim Lemon. Um, whoa, she ain't Cheryl Crow. Um, the, the Super Bowl's on Sunday. If schools want to not have kids uh, in school, then schedule an in-service day. If you don't want to work the day after the Super Bowl, schedule a PTO day. Stop being a dickhead. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Make it I a holiday. watched every Super Bowl in school that I can fucking remember, and my ass was at school the next day. Right, because here's the thing. Bro, the Super, the, it's one fucking the day. The Super Bowl generally ends around like 10, 10, 30. Roughly, maybe, yeah. maybe 11 o'clock if the game goes a little bit long. Depends right. on the Super Bowl yeah. halftime show. Dra- drag your... We're at 17 people, guys. Oh, here we go. It happened. It happened. Spin Time it. to spin the wheel spin of it. impressions. Come on. Be someone good, please. You get one-ish minute of Vince McMahon... What a great time to have Vince McMahon Vince, joining you know, this us. This is a great time for Vince, Vince to McMahon, be joining the show. Vince McMahon, ladies and gentlemen. Vince, um, we're talking about these the, the, the potential for WrestleMania. Your show. This this year is the um, the pirate year. We don't want to say the number year because we then everybody s- knows how old it is. But we this can is, say the number. We can say the every- Roman numeral, right? Once what? everybody knows what year it is, they know how old I am. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh. We don't we don't want that, Vince. But but two. Two hour or two separate days, Vince, for WrestleMania next year. It's all about the money. Well, okay. I mean that that is fair, Vince. Um, now, Vince, what do you, what do you think, Vince? Right now, today, what do you think the main event will be for WrestleMania Pirate Booty? Well, goddamn, pal. Um, it's hard to not say Triple H will be out there. Okay, That's not in the main true. event picture. Yeah. Your son-in-law? Why the hell not? He's just not an active wrestler. He's in better shape than everyone else. Do you, do you like his veins? He's so vascular. Interesting. Oh, my. Brock Lesnar? Hey, Vince, what did you do? Here's a, a, a guest, uh, a listener question. Hey, Vince, what did you do after winning the Royal Rumble in 1999? 
I drank four gallons of raw milk. And then years later, I'd run down to the ring as fast as I could and break both of my quads. <laughs> that also happened. Yeah. Wait, are you Kevin Nash? Shut up. <laughs> Uh, one one last thing, Rusev was just on your te- or your television show saying this. Come in my face. What are your comments on that? Ah, oh, it's great shit. All right, thank That's you, Vince. Good shit, pal. Vince. We appreciate you uh, joining us here. Uh, we hope uh, we hope the Royal Rumble is very successful this weekend. Me too. <laughs> me too. Ha- ha- hashtag never mind. Um, <laughs> Vince McMahon's hashtag me too. <laughs> hashtag me it's too. Just about earning money. All right. Um, let, let me look uh, at a couple of the, uh, the the listener responses. Oh, that's right. We were doing question of the yeah, week question, about thirty five minutes ago. Question. Yeah. No kidding. Um, Lou, Lou, I think uh, had, had brought up the issue with NXT being on Saturdays, uh, and and I think um, Jay said uh, it's, it's fine to try new things. Uh, seemed well for Wrestle Kingdom. Doesn't mean to work for WWE. Um, Jim, what is that number up to? Uh, we're 16. jumping back to 16. Oh, we're jumping back here. Spin the Jim, wheel, make Jim, the deal. Jim spins the wheel. What do we have? It's a surprise. Be someone God, good. Booker T. Oh, man, let me tell you, it's so good to be back here on Three Count Thursday, man. Booker, man, good to have you. What is your opinions on a two-day WrestleMania? Oh, two-day WrestleMania is going to be great, man. It's going to give a chance for Booker T to get another Hall of Fame ring, man. GI bro needs a ring. How many how many Hall of Fame rings do you have? Two. Two so you're two time. Two time Hall of Fame. <laughs> um I tell you, I obviously we've got a big weekend uh coming up here, Booker. Um between Worlds Collide, Royal Rumble. Do you have a prediction for what might be your shucky ducky quack quack weekend uh moment of the weekend? Oh man, let me tell you. Let me look at this Worlds Collide card because I think the Shucky Ducky Quack Quack moment of the weekend is going to be this match right here Rhea Ripley versus Tony Storm. Now uh, that should be a fantastic one. That's a Shucky Ducky Quack Quack moment if I've ever seen one. Uh, we, have, uh, we have one question here from the listeners. Yeah. Uh, it says, Booker, why did you go on the Jericho cruise but pulled out of Starcast? What's the deal with that? Booker T loves boats. There it sounds, is. That, that sounds like a pretty good reason, Book. Thanks. Also, I could be on a boat and be incognito. Uh, you, you could do that as well. Um, any any final parting thoughts here, Booker? How about you watch WWE backstage on Tuesday night, sucker? There you go. All right, thanks, Booker. We appreciate it. Um, I think Scotty had, had talked a little bit about the uh, the, the logistics uh, maybe of uh, of a of a two day uh, WrestleMania event, um, uh, maybe being an issue. Uh, Chase says no. One day it's like the Super Bowl of wrestling. Um, the Devin says uh, his opinion is people will uh, say that the WWE is copying New Japan uh, because they did a two night uh, Wrestle Kingdom this year. They should keep it one night because again it is like wrestling's uh, Super Bowl. Uh, and then somebody said Michigan, Michigan, or at least our takeover Detroit. So I'm not sure, not sure exactly what that means. Hey, name a state, name a state, <laughs> name a city that you want. <laughs> yes. um, but here's the thing. Too, so here's the thing about um, WrestleMania being two nights. People don't like change. That's correct. A fucking men. <laughs> <laughs> People don't like change. When night, when uh, excuse me, when SmackDown went from Thursday to Friday. People hated it. When Pete, when SmackDown went from Friday to Tuesday, people hated it. When SmackDown when when anything on wrestling changes networks, people hate it. Changes time slots, people hate it. People are already shitting on AEW Dark being on TNT at a different time slot than being on YouTube. Yeah. Is it was is so, it is that official? Yeah, their second show is going to be AEW Dark. Mm. So I, I wish they would have just done a different show. I'm fine with it being dark and then do a different show uh, in YouTube to take the place. Okay, of dark. I mean that's fair. Yeah, they keep the YouTube presence. Um, but pe- people hate change. hundred percent. So yes, give, yes. you're speaking pe- my language. People <laughs> people hated the fact that uh, that uh, Wrestle Kingdom was going to be two nights. Yeah, I felt that Wrestle Kingdom was a much more easier to digest product in two nights instead of 
making everything happen in one night. Dang. What's the number there? Uh, we're at 15. We're up to 15 again. We're up to 15 again. It, Let's... Took, us, it took us a while to get here. Tim, do you want to spin it? Or not, not you run it. We're spinning it here, Jim. I'm going to tell you. Have you tell me what it is? It is the Brett the Hitman Heart. Oh. Oh, I might be here for a while. Oh, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> Is it just, no? Uh, I almost, I almost dropped a, a Ryan, Ryan level joke. Don't do that. Uh, I, I know. I'm sorry. I, I now, Brett. Um, friends of ours, friends of uh, our, our colleague Tim. Oh, here, they, Brett. Let me get that. They. Oh my God, damn it! You think uh, you're some kind of funny guy? No, you were drooling. I wanted you to just, not get it on the I'm microphone because hung- I'm hungry. It's uh, Ugh. but. Brett, uh, that they they have a uh, a podcast, uh, the Final Wrestling Place. It's a great podcast. Just so listen to it. It is a great podcast. Mondays at midnight. You're actually on their on their poll for a potential uh, topic. They should talk about what are they going to talk about? Uh, they're, they're me? Doing... Are they going to talk about how great my brother Bruce is? Uh, no, I, Smith. Well, I mean, they might they might talk about that, but the, their their series right now is on on people's greatest nemesis. Oh yeah. So like, if if you if you, you would win their poll. Then they would talk about your greatest nemesis. Who might be some of the greatest nemesis of uh, of Brett the Hitman Hart that they might talk about? Oh, they'd probably talk about uh, my great classic matches with uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's a good nemesis. Oh, he was a great nemesis. I handpicked him. Oop, it's happening again. Uh, people could oh they could talk about uh, the the fights with my brother Owen. Uh, they could also talk about uh, you know me having to wrestle wrestle that filthy. Dirty, perverted, degenerate Shawn Michaels. Yeah, that was a, that was about. Uh, I mean, some might argue that that Bill Goldberg, Brett, was your. I don't remember him. What about him? Oh, um, okay, maybe you might, you might not remember. Uh, uh, my not. head hurts now. Oh, you might not. Jesus. Hey, just to let you know, you are currently winning that poll, thirty six percent. But a fellow Canadian is creeping in, Kevin Owens, thirty two percent. No, Kevin Owens is a great guy. It's a real jam up guy. He's not El Dandy. He's really close. Now, Brett, I, I know you've heard of the final final wrestling place. Yeah, it's a great podcast. Where can people go on Twitter? I'm sure you you are aware. Give a, you should give them a plug to where they can go and vote for you. I'd, in absolu- this I'd absolutely love to. If you go to twitter.com forward slash final place pod uh, on the Twitter, you can go and you can vote on the podcast polls every week. Uh, they do seasons. Uh, this season, season seven, the year of the the season of the nemesis, we've talked about uh, in great. De- we, sorry, I, I take such pride and ownership of what they're doing. It's, especially a, it's like a universal the, we. I think it's it's the royal we. Um, but uh, that the podcast is doing has has covered uh, the the man called Sting. He stole my finish. He did. Uh, he did. We also talk about uh, Triple H. You know, Shawn Michaels' best friend mm-hmm. at Filthy Hyena. We talk about a great, great wrestler in uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, gone way too soon. Mm-hmm. And uh, we talk about uh, Lex Luger, the guy who, who shouldn't have been the co-winner with me in the 94 Rumble. That's true. But, that um, is true. But they had to take him off that damn bus and have him win the because <laughs> he couldn't get the job done at SummerSlam. That's right. So they had to find a way to get him at WrestleMania. But Mr. Perfect showed him. Um, so Brett, uh, who, who is your, okay, pick? I get you a bread mark, but Jesus Christ, it's been going yeah, on for just, 18 minutes. He doesn't get the dirty. He doesn't get very many chances to talk to yeah, his come best on, friend. Man. Right, yeah. who, who's going to win the Royal Rumble, Brett? Well, me. He might think he's in this year's okay, Rumble. Yeah, actually, that's, that, that's Brett, I'm the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Oh, Natalia. Damn right. <laughs> Well, she's obviously going to win the female Royal Rumble because I can't be in there because I've got a penis. <laughs> I've Brett, got a thank penis. you. Thank you for joining us, Brett. Go hit men. That's right. Um, all right. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be uh, something to keep an eye on um, is is the idea and prospect of WrestleMania being a uh, a two-day event next year. I'd like it to stay as one, but I'll watch, obviously, either way. Let me see, let me see the wheel. We're all gonna. We're all gonna. There's somebody whoop, that I do that is not on the wheel. That oh. should be on the wheel. Who were you thinking? Um. All right. Yeah. How is this guy not on the wheel? The uh, an, who, another who topic. There's a better marker. Well, oh, he's too. gonna write it. Okay. We, we are still live. Yeah. We are still live here, pal. I know. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, Brett's still here. Um, 
the the uh, today uh, it was reported Mike Johnson of PW in uh, PW Insider. Oh, Mike! Oh, Mike! Um, reported that the NXT Women's Title, currently held by Rhea Ripley, is uh, no longer going to be known as the NXT Women's Championship. It is simply going to be known as the NXT Championship. Um, I know there was. Uh, it was this one actually that I used? Yeah. We're talking markers again. Yeah, I, obviously. I didn't obviously. have to say that into the microphone. Yeah, yeah. Um, Come in my face, Jim. Fuck you. Come in my face. Uh, so obviously, it was a it was a quite the topic of uh, of discussion today uh, on on wrestling Twitter about um, the NXT Women's Championship losing the women's portion of the name of the title. Um, my only, I don't have a problem with it. I don't think it was necessarily something that had to be done. Um, my only question, and, and I did pose it to, uh, at Mike Johnson, PWI or whatever he is on Twitter, Mm -hmm. um, is how do how are, besides when you see them on screen, like how, how are they going to differentiate between the NXT championship that Adam Cole currently holds, baby, um, and the NXT championship that Rhea Ripley currently holds. Seems like a really easy answer that if we're talking about Rhea Ripley, we're talking about the NXT championship that Rhea Ripley holds. If we're talking about the NXT championship that Adam Cole is holding, baby, Adam Cole will be holding the championship. That blew up my ears. It sure did. I should have knew it was coming too. I should have known it was coming. I, I really, uh, I let my guard down. I did, yeah. Um, but I feel like Frank, nope, not Frank. Scott in the comments hits my opinion, nail head. The people are in an uproar. Nope, it's and, a it's a title. Who fucking cares? Um, like I just I don't know why anybody would be upset about it. They they changed the NXT championship. Or the UK championship, and everybody was like pissing and moaning. It's the same goddamn thing. They just took some words off. Not a big deal. No, they literally just changed the logo. Oh, was that the, what it was? In the middle of the belt, yeah. Because it had the because it was the, the WWE, WWE UK yes, championship. Okay. Now it's the NXT one. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. Like, I'm assuming they did that with the cruiserweight championship too. They and, haven't yet. Oh, really? But I'm sure they will. Because they call that the it, NXT. It, 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 it is the yeah. Championship. Well, and I think they've been calling the UK championship the NXT UK championship for a while. Probably. Um, but yeah, so like, yeah, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't bother me in any way, shape or form. Like, you know, I I know if I'm talking about, uh, you know, the title formerly known as the NXT Women's Championship, I know which one I'm talking about. Like, I like I, I don't see um, and I guess not that it, it, it could never happen in in. The WWE or NXT uh, that that there would be an intergender uh, competition, but like I don't think Deanna Perrazzo is going to be challenging Adam Cole for the NXT Championship. See, in in so in my group chat that I have with my other wrestling friends, um, including the co-host of Final Wrestling Place, Marcus, um, this is or like Smarcus. <laughs> yeah, he's really great. Um, sometimes he's a bit of a pig, but that's okay. Um, so, he actually has a really good take. I'm stealing it. Sorry, Marcus. Um, but WWE's trying to get it out in front of a him. change. He's, he's trying to get out. WWE's trying to get out in front of a change before it's needed. Um, it logically doesn't make much sense, but it's moving away from gender specifications. Um, it's a rare proactive move because it's gonna the, the title's going to be for women and non-binary competitors who may have been born a woman but identify male or vice versa. Okay. Which Wait, so the NXT Women's Championship? Mm-hmm. Well, hit that again for me. You said I think he used the words wrong. Okay, okay. So but he's thinking, Nyla Rose. Yes, like gotcha. I got what you're saying. Got it. Yeah, it's but for non- it, non-binary who more identify as female, or but she identifies as female. So then, what is the problem with her cha- fighting for a female championship? It's like not, removing it's just, that title doesn't necessarily change that. But it's the nomenclature, like it using a phrase that deals specifically with a gender. There, at some point, will become right because like, they're very taboo. I get that. There's not currently well, not taboo, but just like 
There's not Stadium. currently anybody in the in the wrestling business that um, identifies as they. Yes, there is. Oh, is there? Mm-hmm. I would believe there still, is. Still, still life with apricots and pears. Okay. Uh, he's an independent wrestler, but my bad. He does. I was unaware. They, they do identify as they. There's nobody in WWE. Correct. That at least when Jim says wrestling world, he means that. Come he, on. No, no, but but like there's. But it's no, AEW too. But there's nobody. You're there's right. nobody in the WWE that um that re- is recognized as they. Um. So. Like you said, they're getting ahead of something that if they sign somebody who identifies as they or uh, isn't there also like a Z? Zim and Zer. Zim and Zer. So if you have a Zim in in WWE or a Zer in WWE, then they, you know, that 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 individual may not want to compete for the women's championship. So this is just and, getting ahead and of it. Literally, this topic could be spent like a whole hour on. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Could. Um, but like, here's the thing. It, like I said, like if and and more times than not, um, the you know it's if Chelsea Green is in the middle of the ring confronting Rhea Ripley, um, we know which title Chelsea Green is challenging for. Rhea Ripley's title. Rhea Ripley's title. Right. And because, like, I, you know, I, I have seen some people, like, commenting, and not in, like, a not like a negative or, or angry way or anything, but, like, that when they announced, like, you know, this women's division match, um, and I think this speaks to what Becky Lynch touched on on, on backstage this week, like, removing, like, the women's division thing. Like, we know if it's, uh, if it's Lacey Evans versus Natalia, we know that's a women's division match. Like they don't go this men's div- stop it. Is Ryan. Natalia the greatest? Stop example it, to put Ryan. There. Like if it's if it when it's uh, you know Zack Ryder versus uh, you know Sheamus, it, they don't announce it as this men's division match is scheduled for one fall. They just say the next match is scheduled for one fall. Right. They also say that for the women, too. They don't say it's a women's match uh, anymore. You sure about that? Pretty sure. Uh, I have to check my notes. And by check my notes, I mean pay attention on SmackDown tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> now they don't go, it's a divas match. Well, they yes, they do not. That is that is a dirty word. Um, but, uh, not if you're Paige's boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck that guy. Um, but no, I, I mean, at least as of a couple weeks ago, I still I still noted that they were... And I only know to be because somebody had pointed it out. Like somebody, I saw somebody on Twitter pointed out. So like, I think maybe that's part of this too. Is like, you know, maybe we'll see a day because like right now, I think you could, you could fairly easily move away from even that on the the main roster because you have the Universal Championship, the WWE Championship, and if you take women's out of it, you'd have a Raw champion and a SmackDown champion. That's also true. I mean, the the only the only one would be, and, and because you have a Raw Tag Team Champion, a SmackDown Tag Team Champion, and then you have the WWE Tag Team Champions. So you know, with the main roster titles, you could easily get away with Drop removing that, the word sure. the re- removing the word women. Again, it doesn't affect me either way. Like I said, it wasn't it wasn't a it wasn't something that I sat back and thought you know this needs to happen. And then when I saw the news today, I was like, okay, cool. So Rhea Ripley's the NXT champion. Right. No big deal. It d- right. d- does not affect me. And do they want to call it the NXT silver champion? Because it has the silver X on it. It does have sure. a silver X. You know, then, you know, or maybe they'll, they'll upgrade, uh, you know, Adam Coles to the NXT world champion or something. You know, I thought maybe they'll do something uh, from that aspect that would, uh, you know, differentiate the two the only way unless they differentiate it is if you're in the crowd and you have no clue what the card is and the ring announcer goes this next match is for the nxt championship right and you're like who the fuck's walking out coming out and guess what then you're going to be surprised you're going to be like you're going to be more surprised than most entrants to the royal rumble absolutely would be um all right this today marks the 36th anniversary of Hulk Hogan winning the his first WWE at that time WWF championship uh, over the uh, the Iron Sheik at Madison Square Garden. Is Hulk Hogan on there? Uh huh. Think so. He's on there, brother. On there. You have- um, but we only have eleven live viewers, so right, we, so we got to get up to 15. we got to get up to fifteen to have a chance at having Hulk Hogan right here 
on this anniversary. Um, but it just kind of when I when I saw that this morning, and credit uh, to intern Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Um, that at least to me, at least in the WWE, is there, and, and we can branch it out to all the professional wrestling. Is there a bigger or more important moment in WWE or pro wrestling than than Hulk Hogan winning his first WWF championship, launching Hulkamania into existence, and really changing the WWF, changing the pro wrestling landscape? I mean, forever. Like you know, you had the you know the Rock and Wrestling Connection. You had the the advent of WrestleMania, which obviously then. In time, spurned all the other pay-per-views, the Monday Night Wars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and here we still are. Like, is is there a just off the top of your head? And if you're in the live video, please give give uh, you know give your thoughts on this as well. Is, is there that you can think of a more important or bigger uh, you know date, impact, moment, whatever you want to call it, than the launch of Hawkamania? It's a different kind of important, but King of the Ring 1996, the birth of Austin 316. Okay. Like, that was the next rocket for wrestling. Like, that was the next launch of the birth of Hulkamania, in a way. Right. Exactly. Like, right. It, was, it was taking wrestling to heights unreached. It was the spurn. Some could say it was the start of the Attitude Era. Okay, um, yeah, I, I would agree that, that around then is when it started. And so I would say King of the Ring 96. It's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's really fair. Um, if if you want to listen to Paul Heyman and what the real start of the Attitude Era was, was the the launch of like the ECW as the extreme brand. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I guess my, my mind went to Shane Douglas throwing down the NWA championship for the ECW championship and the launch of, like, extreme championship wrestling. Because we may not get to the Attitude Era. Without something Without like that. that moment. So yeah. that, would be, that would be a moment that at least stuck out in my mind as something very important. It's important. See, it's tough, though, because Hulk Hogan winning – the world title from Iron Sheik was something that was huge for all of wrestling. That's fair. And Austin 316 was something that at first wasn't, but bloomed into. I think that like Shane Douglas throwing down the, the NWA championship was the lighting of a fuse. Okay. Yeah. That, Okay, that's that, fair. That's that fair. That led led to, to a, yep, a bigger, bigger explosion. That's so fair. it's not it's not a big explosion like Hulkamania was or like Austin three sixteen was. Is Hogan winning the championship here a bigger moment than Hogan slamming Andre in WrestleMania three? Uh, because I think wrestling fan, non-wrestling fan, my grandma has seen Hulk Hogan body slam Andre the Giant. Ever, I think everyone has seen Hulk Hogan slam yeah, Andre Yeah, I mean, the here's Giant. the thing. Like, for, me, for me, my answer is there's not a bigger moment than this. Because you don't get WrestleMania 3. You don't get Hogan slamming Andre without this moment. That's fair. I think this is like, where... This is where it started. That's I think I think what this comes down to, and this is something that we're struggling with on Final Wrestling Place, like the difference between greatest and best, like is is Hulk Hogan winning the title from the Iron Sheik the bigger moment? No. no. Is it the more important moment? Okay, that's yes. Fair. Gotcha. Andre slam Andre getting slammed in the Pontiac Superdome, brother. That's the biggest moment in wrestling. That's the history. biggest moment in wrestling yeah. history. I, okay, that's that's I mean, a great, in, in, in great, the same, great like, way to talk about. But it's not the most important moment. Austin, like, or the most pivotal moment. More, more people, like, like uh, Austin, the Austin uh, Mike Tyson confrontation versus you know King of the Ring '96. Like th that could be that could be like a similar because like 
when I remember when 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 that happened, when Austin and Mike Tyson get into a freaking shoving match, it was like, oh my god, oh my god, cause but, and effect. Right, you don't get that right, right. without King of the Ring '96. So to me, there's there's not a more important moment. There's bigger moments, but the Hogan and and I and Devin, I saw your comment, and he did say like he said the CM Punk play bomb. That was a big moment. The pipe bomb was a big moment. Definitely not bigger than this. And, like, I know Devin, you know, F you Hulk Hogan. Okay? I get it. I get the – and and, and, and there is – I'm never going to, like, shame or badmouth anybody who has anger towards Hulk Hogan, towards Terry Bollea. That's fine. That's justified. But – and the, and the thing I, I have stressed is, like, you, we, you can't – you can't cancel what Hulk Hogan was to the wrestling business. You, if you don't want him in it currently, you don't think he should be in the WWE on camera involved like that. That's fine, but you can't you can't erase what Hulk Hogan gave us because of an unfortunate and awful thing that he also gave us. Right, right. you know what I mean. So like, but th- by, by that you mean. Just Brooke Hogan, right? Correct, one hundred percent. Definitely, Her yeah. Singing that, career, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> that awful thing you're talking that's, about. That's definitely somewhere. the awful thing that I was talking about. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, that this that moment. I mean, is, without is, Brooke Hogan, ain't no one mad at Terry Bollea. That that's a ding. You got a great point right there, Ryan. Um, all right. So obviously, Wednesday Night Wars this week. Um, very contrasting look. Um, to uh, to each other, and and uh, you had, and you, had you had one on boats the boat. You had one, uh, you know, in full sail. Both had fairly significant full sail. So we're still talking about AEW. Oh, right? yeah, <laughs> I see. I see what you did. It was on a boat. It was on a boat. They went full sail. Um, I I, I apparently missed the like, and now that I'm like thinking it through, like I get why it wasn't a live show. Um, but like I thought it was live next year. They said they're doing it live from the boat. From the boat. Really? Next year, they're doing it live. Okay. We're going live, pal. Um, I, Fuck it. I'll write it. We'll do it live. <laughs> um, I love the look. Like, it was cool. It was different. It was super cool. Uh, I, I, I will say it had, and whether this is what they, you know, are going for or were going for, but, like, it. I mean, it had a kind of a bash at the beach feel to it, which I know like it was kind of like a, like a WC just like n- not exact, but like the feel because it's like, it's, it's out the, the, the outdoors. You could see the wind blowing it, through the luscious locks it, of jungle Jack Perry. It had a summer or a spring breakout nitro feel. Okay. I didn't watch a lot of those. Yeah. Bash at the beach <laughs> very rarely was outside. They but did do some outside, right? One. One? Yeah, I think they only did that one. <laughs> okay. They did the one in 95. Actually, on the beach. Right? On the beach. It was on the beach. It was bright as shit. Yes. It, this it, I love because oh, it was The night. show opened with Meng and Sting going like 25 minutes. In the ring. Shooting. Get it, Meng and, Meng for, and Sting in the ring. <laughs> shooting for Baywatch. So they do like the same spots Jesus, over and over nice. again. Ugh. They have the big promotion for it. but um, That'll put asses in the seat. Now, <laughs> Nitro... Every year was out at like Club La Vila, okay, with the pool. All right, right so maybe okay. it was more. It it definitely gave me those vibes. Which yeah, I mean, I mean, well, it, when Hangman Page came out and like just the you know the tight camera shot and it's the you know the hair is flowing in the breeze and it's and it's it's shot in a Turner way. Like yeah. I, you right, know what yeah, I mean? I'm not trying call. to be funny about that, but it, it's it, it it's shot differently than than the WWE is, and immediately I was like. Oh, it's this Keith Mitchell. It kind of feels like Nitro. I didn't um, love the lighting. I the didn't like the roving cam caught the side illuminating the ring, the lights every once in a while. Okay, okay. Like, it just didn't seem like it was lit proper. Lit great for live wrestling. Sure. You're on the boat, live, it looks great, it's very bright. Now, the cameras picked up some was, of the lighting. Was the, is, was the boat in motion, or was the boat it was was on, it it was docked the, at this point? Do we know? I think it was in the ocean. Well, I know it was in the ocean. I mean, I would no, they didn't park it on the beach. No, I mean, but they they dock and they get off the cruise boats at like port of calls. 
Right. Like, that's a so, thing. I mean, they were out a but sailing away. But I think away. they were a sailing Come away. Come sail away. Right. Um, and you could definitely tell, like, you heard the wind every once in a while on the mics. Sure, you sure. You definitely saw And you also didn't blow. hear a lot of things when the crowd got censored. That's also true. Can we, they, like, and, and I'm not going to do, like, a, I'm not going to, like, make a big segment of, like, harping things. But, man, that's something that, because, like, a lot of times when it's happening is during uh, MJF promos. Like, can we try to find what a way? Ch- what are they chanting? I, I'm not even. I don't know. Did you just catch swear you words chanting? that are getting bl- it's swear words like like the f words? The f word. I'm pretty sure TNT gets the, away with everything. The else. s my d word. Like can oh, it's not my d word. But like oh. can can we? I don't, tr- I don't think you can say. I don't think you can actively say s my d on television. But like I don't know. I just feel like South Park's gotten away with that. Yeah, suck my dick, guy. I just feel like <laughs> I that's don't think something. I've ever heard on South Park <laughs> someone <laughs> tell somebody to S their D. Like I, I, I just is there a better is there a, is there a better way? And maybe like it's put less of the house through the system. Like have the referee tell the ring crew, hey, tell these guys <laughs> not to do that. That's what I. Hey that, guys, stop. That saying always that. works. You tell them to stop throwing streamers, bitch. I am not going to do that. You that's have Paul Turner. Say, hey, you, you stop saying that's my D right now because we're on TV. Listen here, Tanya. And kids are watching. Tanya, I'm not going to tell the fans to stop throwing streamers. Um, but, like, because, like, to, like, I hate losing MJF, the parts of MJF promos. I agree. Like, it just, it sucks. It's annoying. Um, the, the, the crowd was hype. Uh, I loved them singing uh, Judas even after the music cut. Like, it, it, like here's the thing, man, and and how did it feel to watch wrestling with an army of fans who are Jericlones? It's almost like it's Jericho's cruise, right? Yeah, yeah. right. It was great, and it was like, wow, this AEW fan base. I'm like, is the Jericho cruise? These are Jericho's people. Like the right. Jericho cruise was announced before like AEW was announced. The Jer- yeah, the Jericho this cruise is like the third was the fourth year, right? Of doing this the is cruise? the second wave. The second wave of the Jericho cruise. <laughs> But you know what I mean. So like, but it, it was it was cool. It was a cool environment. Obviously, you have new tag team champions, uh, single stars as tag team champions. When there's a actual tag, te- oh no no no, <laughs> um, it's odd. It's almost like that happened a day before. Um, no, it, it it. I like where they're going. I know, I like you can see where they're going. The I, difference is that Hangman and Omega have like literally had three other tag team matches, other than oh, Buddy Murphy getting okay. awakened by the healing power of the Monday Night Messiah's black oh, okay. hand of grace. I mean, I mean, <laughs> analytically speaking, three is greater than zero. zero. Um, but like, I mean, and they but, were also a part of the elite. Now, Buddy Murphy was like a, a year, tag like, team specialist, though. Down in NXT when he won that tag team strap with uh, uh, Blake, Murph and Blake. I don't think think that you can. What is it? Wesley Blake? Wesley Blake. I don't think you can call somebody a tag team specialist for winning the tag titles with one person. They had Alexa Bliss by their side and she was fucking hot. Yeah. Roll tight on that. Okay, but that that doesn't make him a tag team specialist. No, I'm I'm being purposely funny. My book it Um, Like... Uh, but no, I see where they're going. I'm, I, I like it. Uh, Moxley, your new number one contender. Like I thought it was a good episode. How did nobody end up in the pool? They did. MJF oh, did. did they, MJF oh, I mean, his okay. Burberry boots went in the pool. I was no in the match. Is what I meant. The the Moxley match. I was just hoping oh yeah that that the they pool brought, but like spot. I don't you didn't know. you didn't want to go back to that well. Okay, that's right fair. away. That's fair. It's um, a pool, Jim. It's not a well. Yeah, okay, uh, well it could a, be a well. well cut out of water I suppose. look it's deep enough for marco stunt for it to be a fucking well i know that much oh marco <laughs> Can, <laughs> i we got fucking gotta, loved it we gotta cover we gotta cover worlds collide but one day i want to have an open discussion as to why people think marco stunt sucks i don't think he sucks no there are a lot of people that do though i there's think- a lot of people who think that marco stunt sucks and every time i ask some oh my god I don't want to derail the podcast. I don't. I We're don't, running out of time. I don't have. I actually don't necessarily have an opinion. I got five minutes until eleven o'clock. Look, everybody who says Marco Stunt sucks can't give me a reason why he sucks. Right. I won't say he sucks. I don't necessarily get it. I don't necessarily get Darby Allen. But 
if I tell you Darby Allen is Jeff Hardy, you get. Well, it. You, you said that before, and like kind of, but uh, no, I, I don't. I don't personally see it yet. I'm sorry, he's not six two, or six foot one, and. and I just don't get it. Maybe. By the way, six foot is really tall. In AEW, six foot's a fucking giant. <laughs> um, yeah, wait till Brian Cage gets there. Um, he's not that tall. No, but he's a fucking monster. He's a meat house. Um, but here's the thing. Yeah, like, I, I don't... I had a conversation with somebody, and they were like, Marco, Marco Stunt absolutely sucks. I'm like, can you tell me why? He's like, he's bad at wrestling. Really? He's bad at wrestling. Can you tell me what also, he's bad at? Also, there's been a lot of people who have been bad at wrestling that have been successful on TV. And he was like, can't you, can't you see? I'm like, no, not really. Like, Here's the thing. I saw somebody earlier make the comparison that Marco Stunt is like, uh, because they were going strictly on height, and they said, um, think Spike Dudley or Rey Mysterio. And I, and Two I, really great wrestlers. Right, but like, I didn't, I didn't want to get into it because I'm like, if you if you can say like the way that WWE used Spike Dudley, maybe. But like I wanted to cut, throw like a major red flag on Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio's so fucking good and has been used as such everywhere he's been. WWE kind of used Spike Dudley really good too. But the, more times than not, like when you think of Spike Dudley in the WWE, it's like more of like a comic relief with Devon and Bubba. More more times than not. So like, and I think that was the the kind of the idea the person was trying to make, but like, let, never put Rey Mysterio in that grouping just because he was little. Rey Mysterio at um, a thousand and one injuries and uh, you know what forty some odd, probably pushing near fifty years old, just put on what is now on my first match of matches of the year. This past Monday on Raw. Ooh, we have an entrant. That ladder match with him and Andrade, yeah, it had a couple of bumpy spots, but that thing was a fucking banger, man. It was a solid that match. match was so good. Like, here's the thing. 12 months from now, it probably won't make my top five. It may not even be the best ladder match of the year. It probably won't You're be. Right, right, right. However, like, it's the first match that made the list of consideration. It's been the best match on Raw this year. Uh, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Um, Man, Marco Stunt, I just, I don't understand. I think he bumps fantastically. He's really, he's really good. He's a great bumper. He's a great there entertainer. There's spots on wrestling cards for comedy, funny spots. 100%. I've always likened him more of, like, the Mikey Whipwreck that would always be with somebody and can make them look better because he bumps well with affection and like his size plays to that. Like he is everything. Going to get everything thrown looks like he kills him. Yes, it really does. Everything that he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he had a spot and the crowd was popping like crazy on those schoolboys. Sure. One, two, and nope. One, two, nope. Jericho caught him, sold it like a fucking champ pin. And did you see that Marco Stunt was killing it on the cruise? He actually performed with Fozzie. I really? saw that. That's yeah, cool. it was dope. It was, did you send that? The I, oh no, I was somewhere. The, he did like I wear my sunglasses at night. No, I didn't send. He that. did with multiple Fozzie. He did multiple songs. Oh, I only saw that one. Did you see the promo? Pit, the picture with uh, Jericho and his son Marco Stunt. That's on our uh, Facebook page. <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, I, I, I posted that one. Actually, you know it because you're watching us now. Um. The uh, uh, NXT last night, obviously, we got to the uh, through the semifinals of the Dusty Classic. So it is the Grizzled Young Vets and the Broser Weights uh, in the uh, in the finals. Uh, Undisputed Era lost because of the distraction from uh, the Imperium. That was done extremely well. Um, next week, we get Tegan Knox, Dakota Kai uh, on NXT uh, NXT Live, and obviously, the biggest news out of NXT this week. Uh, new North American champion Keith Lee. My God, like when that match started, like I sent the message to the group and I was like, please pull the trigger on Keith Lee winning this. Like you, you know, you had the big, the big moment at Survivor Series, him and Roman in the ring. And like ever since then, like if people hadn't been aware of Keith Lee before, they were fucking aware of Keith Lee now. And it's like, please do it. <laughs> do it, you cowards. Um, pull the trigger on Keith Lee. They did. I'm excited as hell 
that Keith Lee is a North American champion. I'm sad that Keith Lee being North American champion had to come at the expense of Roderick Strong losing the North That's American fair. championship. Like, I get that it's going to make Keith Lee's reign better because he beat a great champion. Right. But Roderick Strong is damn good. No, he's really good. He's really good. I've come like, around a lot. Like, when when he first came to NXT, I was like, oh, so he's like generic wrestler number seven. Uh, <laughs> because, I mean, seriously, you look at him. It's short, like, what's up with those shitty little boots? Like, like sh- you know. Jim's the boot guy. For like, sure. me- you know, medium short length hair. Um, no distinguishing features, generic ass fucking gear, short ass little boots. Like, oh, cool. You have like a track jacket, like, you know, most independent wrestlers. Like, you know what I mean? It just, it, it felt like I agree. just You're an right. indie character on WWE. And, and, uh, you know, he's put on a banger after banger time after time, obviously being part of undisputed era, um, has, has imagine helped. what happens when you get when you're when you're allowed to work with people you're super comfortable with yeah right? like crazy. all the time crazy so uh yeah no roderick strong has has been absolutely fantastic. where does he rank in your undisputed era one two three four one wow get the fuck out he of is you. better than adam really? cole yes unreal he is better than adam cole oh you're so generic in, in the ring in the ring better than adam cole Oh, it just doesn't do it for me. Well, I see, I see yeah. Paul Bo checked in with us. How you doing, Paul? Oh, hello, Remind Paul. everyone, PPW Resolution, Saturday night in Hazleton. Make sure you check out all the shows on our independent calendar at threecountthursday.com. Tim, Tim, WWE Tim. Hall of Famer is going to be up there. I believe this is Billy Gunn. Yeah, Billy Gunn's seminar. I don't know if there's tickets still available to that seminar. Okay. Spots still available. Um, but yeah, there's a Billy Gunn seminar in the afternoon, but he'll be on the show. Brooklyn Brawler. On the, uh, on the yeah. show as well, and then obviously the uh, the the PPW roster. So uh, the big, it's gonna the be, big Rumble match they're having. Yeah, yeah. I mean, kicking off Rumble week. Huge. Going to be a great show. night. Uh, great night in Hazleton. Um, speaking of new tag team champions, because uh, you know it seems to be a fairly popular thing to move titles, especially tag titles this week uh, in professional wrestling. Seth Rollins and uh, and Buddy Murphy. Uh, are the new Raw Tag Team Champions. But why wasn't it the AOP? I mean, Doesn't matter to they're me. the established tag team, Because right? we got to put Seth Rollins over, bro. Dude, I I am 100% fine with what they did and the potential of where it's going. I love absolutely everything about what's going on, except for one minor thing. What's that? I hate Monday Night Messiah. Really? I hate everything about it. Really? Just Here's why. The, the name of it or you don't like Seth Rollins? I hate the moniker Monday Night Messiah. and the gimmick of Monday Night Messiah. Okay. Here we go. Here's why. Why? It is uninspired, traditional, classic vanilla Paul Heyman. It smells, tastes, feels like Paul Heyman. And I hate it. It's He just fell into this crutch of like... Ah, I got to heal. He 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 thinks he's great. Monday night messiah. Perfect. And like that in like it's just So your Paul Heyman impression is just average Jewish guy. Yeah. Got it. How's Bobby? We got a Bobby over there. We do. Yeah. We do. Um I just it's not for me. Like I love fair. everything about it. I love the fact that we have a stable from it. I love Buddy Murphy having a place. I like the AOP being partnered up with Seth Rollins. I hate Monday Night Messiah. I hate the stained glass shirt. Oh, I, I hate the black the glove. I hate everything. Get well, up. The black glove was originally because he broke his finger, right? Like, I think that's. I don't know. I think that's where, where, where you know, why he I just wore thought it. thought he found one of Emelina's gloves. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> um, no, I think that's why he wore it the night that they that he was in the van with Kevin Owens. Because I think, you know, he was getting involved, but he had a broken finger. He had a broken so finger. it helped protect the finger. Um, he had a broken finger. And it just kind of stuck. He had a broken finger. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I like all of it. The, my One of my favorite juxtapositions, we were talking about. Ooh, big word. For uh, big and I may not have even used it properly. That's a five-point word right there. But, uh, you know, we were talking about wrestling Twitter earlier. Is like, And, and I think you and I might have spoken on this last week, Ryan, is, is like, you know, it, it, it's just you know people are like you know no, they never build new stars they never you know have new feuds they never do this never do this well they put buddy murphy into 
like one of the most prominent stories on Monday Night Raw. You tie him to Seth Rollins, one of the most prominent figures, whether you love him or hate him, uh, over the past few years in, in WWE. Now you give him a championship alongside Seth Rollins with a, a story that can be told, you know, for the next four, five, six months if you want to drag it out that long. Decade if you want. A decade if you want to, but like, you know, and, and even, in, even in the back, like w- after they won the titles, you could see some of like the, the possible like jealousy of the AOP kind of standing behind Rollins. Like it was just like uh, some of the little, the little facial. And the AOP could do that looking at such a tag team specialist like Buddy Murphy. 100%. They, they probably are like, what does this guy have that we don't possess Absolutely. right now? I Absolutely. get it. He is a tag team specialist. They need Paul Ellering back. <laughs> Um, but no, like, because immediately, like people were just losing their minds. I'm like, so you want Murphy, but you don't. And I like, I mean, AOP's fine. Uh, juxtaposition, juxtaposition. Um, I, I enjoyed raw. I thought this past week's raw was one of the better episodes I, I've, I've watched in a while. I think raw has been get progressively better, um, over the past couple weeks. What about SmackDown? Have you watched SmackDown lately? Um, I, I actually watched SmackDown live last week oh okay that's the name of the show no 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 smackdown's the name of the show but i watched smackdown as it was airing live last week oh okay um i usually with smackdown i end up like i I will end up on wwe's youtube okay and catching like the important things that makes sense because like here's the thing like tomorrow night um i'm not gonna be home like i will not be ryan will not be home like either so like um Friday night's tough. Like I do, I do stuff on Friday nights. Um, I may watch it on DVR. I may catch the the, the you know the highlights on uh, on YouTube. So, um, but can yeah, I, can I admit something? You haven't watched SmackDown since it moved to Friday night. I don't. I couldn't tell you anything. Damn. Yeah, like the Usies came back with haircuts. They did. They um, did. Um, Bob Rude's back. Yeah, Bob Bob Rude is back. Um, Bob. Uh, so that's a thing. Pop tart pretzel. The fiend. Yeah. What's the fiend doing? Um, he is feuding wrestling with Daniel B- Bryan Daniel and Bryan. Kane, and he will be wrestling Kane possibly in an inferno match in Saudi Arabia. Fine. Totally fine. Gets a legend spot out of the way, and Bray's wait, they're used keep to winning. lighting people on fire, aren't they? Oh. <laughs> WWE Worlds collide Saturday, January twenty fifth. Speaking the of worlds Center collide, the Western the world. world colliding over with the Ali Pakistans. Jesus. Come in my face. Um All right. Speaking of Worlds Collide, let's look at the look at the cards. Saturday night on the WWE network. Um eight man tag the Imperium. Oh, Bubby fell over. No, Bubby. She heard us talking about She fainted. <laughs> she did. She did. Oy vey. Oy vey. Um Imperium. Does she still work? Let's push let's push a Bubby button. You can't move her. She, the the picture's gonna fall. Just lean the picture forward. Oh, okay, she still works. Multi ball soup. Um, Imperium versus Undisputed Era. Shut up, Bobby. Eight man tag match. Uh, I got Imperium. They're they're at the stronger point right now. They've gotten into the heads of the Undisputed Era. I absolutely agree with you. I love I love Imperium. I love everything about them. That chop, including their entrance theme song. So good. I love it. That fucking chop last night on NXT. Holy hell. Allow me to detour here just for a brief second. Sure. And give a nod to the independent wrestling promotion, uh, GCW, who puts on the Joey Janela spring break shows, which is the first time that I was introduced to Walter when he wrestled PCO. Say it right. Walter? Walter. I'm not German. Mm, Well, he is. Okay, well, I'm not. Um, I also, so I don't say PCO like a French guy either, so... Pico, Pico, um, where like he, Jesus Christ. Jesus, like where he just lit up the chest of PCO. Oh. So it's not uh, like thank one of those you, party crackers. That's <laughs> unreal. <laughs> thank you for for putting that in my in yeah. my in my uh, spectrum of view. But uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Imperium. Imperium, undisputed era, baby. Also, shout out to Jeff Johnson, who sent us a picture of his son. To catch this on, on uh, 
on Twitter. I think so, yeah. I said, love and pure and dangerous music. He got talking. He goes, my three-year-old son absolutely loves it and sends us the picture of his kid doing the little pose. Fantastic. Well, also, the Three Count Thursday deal is still on. If you get a picture of your baby in a Three Count Thursday onesie, so we'll Walter send you wins. Stuff. That's true. He's got his That's little true. kid doing the, the little pose. It's fantastic. All right, we got a singles match. Mia board. Yim. This is on the pre-show. Mia Yim versus Kaylee Ray. Oh, I got Kaylee Ray picking up the win. Ditto. Ditto, ditto. All right, tag team match DIY with a banging new shirt versus Mustache Mountain. Uh, I got DIY. You're not going to put them back together and have them lose. I have Mustache Mountain because they are a more experienced tag team, and people know more experienced tag teams are greater than just two independent guys put together. Apparently not. Yeah, I've got Mustache Mountain because why are you going to put Johnny and Tommaso Ciampa back together in a one-off tag team match leading up to WrestleMania weekend to give us possibly a blow-off match and likes we've never seen before? Maybe. Mm. Didn't think that. Plus, I also feel like <laughs> NXT UK has got to win somewhere. Oh, the, I, I got them. I got, I got, I got them three Mysterio, and three. Um, I do, too. Daily, right? Like. Yeah, Kaylee, Ray, Imperium in the air, and then NXT is going to win throughout. All right, uh, Finn Balor versus, what the fuck's this guy's name? Dragon Dragonoff. Ilja Dragonoff. Ilja, all right. Sorry, didn't get the first. Uh, I got Balor. Uh, Finn Balor. Dragonoff. Uh, and then uh, Fatal 4-Way for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Angel Garza, the champion, defending against Isaiah Swerve Scott, Jordan Devlin, Travis Banks. Uh, I'm taking Swerve. They're probably not going to move the title yet off of Garza, but uh, I'm going to go Swerve. I love everything about Garza. So absolutely. it is really good. Garza, all the. All I love the everything about Isaiah Swerve Scott. There's nothing about him I don't like. Get, oh, put the belt on him. I don't not like anything about him either. I don't care about. I don't care for Garza. Really? Yeah. Don't care. Oh, I take my pants off and I steal kisses from girls, and I'm 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 a dick wrestler, but I got no package. What are you? I'm a tick Get out of here. All right. No and then... Uh, so you both think strange... Okay. Yeah. Rhea Ripley defending the NXT championship or Shucky women... Ducky, quack, or, quack or, moment or, of the night. Or women's championship, depending what they call... Because if... You, like, I went on WWE.com before we went on air. It is still listed currently as the NXT women's championship. So we'll see if that changes come Friday. Uh, excuse me, Saturday. Uh, but Rhea Ripley defending against Tony Storm. There is no way that they're moving this title off of Rhea Ripley yet. No way at all. Rhea Ripley. No offense, Tony Storm. Rhea Ripley. But it's it's Rhea Ripley. rip a Um, Yeah, so we obviously we, we, we touched on uh, the possible um, Kane and the, the Fiend in Saudi Arabia. Okay. Um, the Undertaker. Obviously, WrestleMania season, people begin to talk about The Undertaker. But uh, it appears that he will be involved at the next Saudi show, which will be in February. And because of like the training, like regiment that he goes on, um, now but, like to get ready for each match, he needs like a good bit of time to recover. <laughs> yeah, um, he's still working off those sh- shots of Jack Daniels he took with Stone Cold. Yeah, yeah. So um, it is very likely that he will not be a part of WrestleMania. His next match will be at this Saudi show. His match after that will be at the next Saudi show this summer. So. Uh, I, I would hope that Undertaker's last match is not a Saudi show. Well, who would he wrestle at the Saudi show? The mm-hmm. Ultimate Warrior, probably. <laughs> Yo, the Yakuza. summer show, he'd probably wrestle, what, Earthquake? So that well, makes sense. Earthquake, yeah. Um, but, uh, so yeah, don't 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 plan on, uh, on seeing The Undertaker uh, as a part of WrestleMania, which is only 74 days away yes. per our countdown. 74 days. There. Uh, away could be 73 days away if you just open your minds a little bit <laughs> when's revolution uh our evolution that happened a few years ago yeah, on the, the network yeah, uh, revolution is that's uh, resolution right ppw oh uh, yeah it's ppw, PPW saturday night in hazelton pa um that's the closest so okay <clears throat> ACW i saw tomorrow. people talking about this on raw uh well on twitter during raw uh when matt hardy was uh Involved in the in a match with um, Eric Rowan in the thing in the cage, whatever the hell the thing in the cage is, and and obviously I, I think we're fairly well aware at this point that it appears Matt Hardy's on his WWE farewell tour. Uh, Jeff Hardy is still um, getting his legal situation taken care of. 
Um, it's about I, the most tactful way you could say that. I've seen. Thank you. I've seen a lot of people saying that the WWE is disrespecting the Hardys, particularly Matt Hardy, by employing him. Um, and I and I I I, I, I thought of, I thought I just wanted to bring this to the table because like this notion that they are that they are disrespecting him. I I don't really like. Is it because that like he should he should like leave as a champion, or like be a champion and then lose on his last night there? Like I don't, I I don't I don't necessarily know what people. Is it just because he's like losing to Eric Rowan? Is like is that the problem? The guy who's been over for like the last almost year, like, and like I know WWE kind of missed the ball with like the broken universe thing but like here's the thing and and i don't mean to keep going back to numbers that i say don't totally mean mean something but like the the the, you know the the broken universe from impact wrestling like i mean it was a very popular thing but impact is on a smaller spectrum than the wwe so, like, if they just bring that world into WWE, there's going to be a lot of people going, fuck, is the hell is this? Right. And, like, I don't think the demographic that, that is really tuned into the WWE is the same, like, either demographic graphic or target audience. Ding yourself. Like, I think Impact is aimed at a little bit older audience than the WWE is aimed at. So, uh, you're not going to get broken Matt Hardy truly in the WWE. I don't think you ever were. But, like, correct me if I'm wrong. I know the WWE has, like, you know, as part of their, like, lifetime rehab program has helped Jeff Hardy. I'm pretty sure they've also helped Matt Hardy, correct? Like, in the past, because Matt Hardy had his issues as well. I think Matt Hardy, if you look at, like, the version one Matt Hardy era, probably had some issues, sure. So, this notion that, like, and I get like what Matt Hardy's doing because he has like he's kind of doing like what like free the delete or something um, on his YouTube page, and like you know he's been very vocal and open like about the, how it's kind of coming to an end in the WWE. But like, I think part of it like part of it is just promoting himself and creating a buzz for when he's no longer in the WWE. But it's like. I don't. I don't see how they're disrespecting him. Like, can, can we get over the notion that adults that sign contracts for X amount of years, when somebody's not let out of that contract that they signed because they're not being used the way they thought they should be used, let's stop feeling bad for those people and then make corporations have to have to release them out of the contracts that again an adult signed for you're a fucking man man up you signed a contract work it out or sit at home and collect a paycheck just fucking do it right no sympathy like here's thing you can ask for your release they don't have to give it to you (laughs) your ass can go out and job to fucking i don't know bozo the fucking clown every monday night if the ww wants you to you signed a contract so here's what i hate about wrestling right now especially mainstream wrestling Wrestlers who are unhappy use the I want to release to get what they want. And it yeah. pisses me off because there's people who actually want to want their release who don't get their release because people like the revival. I was going to say, Canales, do you think that's what the revival's doing? Mike Canellis and the revival and Leo Rush and Sasha Banks and everybody else who asked for their release, quote unquote, they quit to greatness. Biff Busick. Yeah. Fun fact, fun fact, uh, Oni Lorcan is only hired by WWE because they want him to be a trainer, and he doesn't want to be a trainer. He wants to wrestle. So they have him hired to wrestle, and then he's eventually going to be a trainer. Right. That makes sense. Like, and don't think he doesn't know that, too, that, like, when I'm done, I still have a pretty cushy job. Yeah, and it's here. like, but it pisses so me off. I don't have to go bag like, groceries at an Acme because because there are people who want who actually want their release, like Sin Cara, like Harper, Luke Harper, sure. who get their release and they actually do something with it. Yeah, I mean, but it, look how long it took them to get it. Yeah, f- because, because of other, those other people, people ruin right? It. Like Mike Canellas, right. I think is is or at least has been working. 
He just NXT dates now. He just came back. He's getting put into a tag team with Tony Nese. Yeah. So like. Yeah. Either way, like you got another baby, but to it's pay not. For. It's not disre- Like it's not di- like this isn't disrespectful. Like I don't understand what disrespect. The, the one of the most lasting moments on what we thought was the Undertaker's last match, WrestleMania, was the fucking Hardys making their surprise return and winning the fucking tag team titles. Huge return. Like they they were on a Ring of Honor show. The, the night, night before. The night before. Yep. And in you, a ladder match against the Young Bucks. It was a fun match, too. And, you, and then the very next night, you are winning the tag team championship in a ladder WWE match in a ladder at match. At WrestleMania. But, like, you, like, the WWE, because that, that moment, because the, it was the hot hand, basically, in what I thought was going to happen was it was going to be the Enzo and Cass championship win. Right. You swerved out of that. Those guys faded to obscurity, unless you're Tama Tonga. <laughs> but like Tommy Tanga, Tommy Tanga. But like the WWE did that for the Hardys, right? Like, I mean, again, and also people are fucking idiots that that like losses mean things to people, right? You're doing your That's job. Their fucking job, man. Someone's got to win, someone's got to lose. Unless fifty percent of the matches end in DQ or no finish in the WWE then you're fine. But you fucking lose matches. It's not a big deal. You lose championships. It's not a big Here's deal. The thing. You're going to go to work tomorrow. That championship is and, a prop. And like, if the entire sewage system at your work explodes... I'm walking out. Ch- I ain't going <laughs> to yeah, lie. I'm done. Nope. Uh, but done. chances are, you might have to clean shit. It happens. You're an adult. Your boss tells you to clean shit, you clean shit. Right. Big you, deal. Right. Right. Simple. Like, if your boss tells you to do something you don't particularly want to do... Guess what? It's your job. Right. Get over it. Like, we do it every day. Everybody, everybody Matt does. Matt doesn't need you fighting his fucking fights for him either. Exactly. Um, Shut up. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's not disrespectful. Also, like, the Hardys were, you know, in a, in a, in storylines, and then Jeff had problems. And then they, like, swerved to, like, the Bray Wyatt, Matt Hardy, like, you know, the leaders of worlds tag team. And that was going pretty well for a while. And then I think Bray got hurt. And then, like, because you were doing some, uh, so you, you had some, you know, the, the, the interactions with Jeff backstage. And they, like, kind of foreshadowed things from, like, the mm-hmm. broken universe. And then, like, Jeff got a DUI or Jeff broke his shoulder or got a DUI when he had a broken shoulder or something. But shoulder there, there, was DUI any, there was any happening. sort of combination of bad things that happened with Jeff Hardy. So, like... While the WWE maybe could have done better with Matt, I guess. Um, in the same time, uh, Jeff could have done better for him and Matt. Did you ever try to recreate something too? Like not what they did was so original and so different, right? In TNA and Impact, that they were never going to be able to capture lightning in a bottle the way Jeff and Matt did. And like, let's be with honest, that broken people were going to shit on it. Right, right. They're going to shit regardless. You know what I mean? So like, if they if they did it, they were, it was going to get shat on. They didn't do it. It's going to get shat on. Um, like, it's not disrespectful. And here's the thing: when, when you go, like, when you when you're going out, if this is Matt Matt Hardy's like swan song in the WWE, you put somebody over, and he and like Eric Rowan got got some of that rub on Monday night. Like, you want new stars? Guess what? Like I said last week, like with you know, sometimes you get you get people that you don't want, but they're a new star. Eric Rowan is that. Not I don't know who asked for it, but he's a new star. They're building him. They're invested in Eric Rowan and whatever the fuck's in that in that cage. What's in the cage, by the way? I don't know. A human head. Rambling rabbit. You think so? Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. What's um, in the box? What's in, what's in the box? Um, and. There's some buzz. Lance Ar- Archer may be signing with AEW. I saw that cool. the other day. I saw people talking about it yesterday. It's so, the thing. So I just it's threw it on thing. there. So Good for him. If you're into that sort of thing, then that's the sort of thing you're, you're into. You're into big guys who got jobs because they looked like tests. Lance Archer. I was going to say, he's been, uh, he was what, Lance Hoyt in TNA? Who else was he? Dallas? Uh-huh. Um, fuck. I've exhausted. Oh, man. 
Wasn't he with Christy Hemme for a while? Hey, he's Lance Hoyt with Christy with Hemme. Hemme. Oh, my God. What was his name in WWE? Mm. What was Lance Hoyt's name in WWE? Retest? <laughs> Test and re... <laughs> quiz? Pop, pop, quiz? Pete and repeat are in a boat. Pete falls out. Who's left? <laughs> Gosh, what was his name? Oh, man. I'm going to look it up. I'm, I'm look looking it up. it up right now. Chuck Palumbo? Uh, was he Vance Archer? Vance Archer. Vance Archer. That yeah. might have been. Uh, yeah, that sounds Vance right. Archer. Was he just on? Uh, he that's was, he was there for a Stone Cold coffee. Steve Austin's show. No, or was that a different guy? No, it was that was Silent Rage. That was Silent Rage. Okay, uh, so that's not Blind Rage, right? That's a different guy. That's a different guy. Silent Rage, Rage is uh, Big Andy. Big Andy Weinberg. <laughs> Um, Silent Rage. Uh, Charlie says not to put another show over, but the new Grill and JR is spectacular. What do they cover? Yeah, I'm not sure what they cover. This Bar- yeah, just I, barbecue sauces. Tomorrow mm-hmm. during work, I have things I have to listen to. I have to listen to what sauce happened. It. Sauce it. I have, sauce it. I have to listen, listen to what happened when. It's a watch along with Roll Rumble 92. What okay. happened? What happened when? Arn is a behind the scenes look at Roll Rumble 15. What happened when? Hey, hey guys. <laughs> so sad, so oh, Royal Rumble 2000. Let's say it. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to Three Count Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Sponsored by Blue Chew. <laughs> Cowboy hat blue. You want a rocking hard cock? <laughs> Come in my face. Oh. <laughs> We should reach out to Blue Chew just to see if we can get anything. Sure, why the fuck I not? Will tweet hey, these and- three, these three fat guys probably can't get a heart on. Let's give them Blue Chew. Um, get, let me have an. We erection. all just have heart attacks on <laughs> on air. We got a race. We got a race during the podcast. We all have to Blue Chew oh, at God. the same no, time. No, not and gonna we, do that. We just have to raise our hands when we're out. <laughs> like, ding! There it is. There it is. It is here. So, it's a, so it, like we're gonna get through the intro and uh, no, we're the, gonna we're gonna do our ad reads. We'll talk about leapsports.com. We'll talk about we'll Come talk about face. what a maneuver. And then we'll, I mean, I usually wear. We'll sh- do the countdown. Three, oh. two, one, chew. Oh. You guys have oh. like swishy pants, and usually like like I'm more of like a I'm denim. Ready, I'm ready for the <laughs> Faye Jackson gray sweatpants battle royal or a khaki guy. Which I might be okay with because I have a belt when I could tuck it up in the belt. There you go. And uh, you're gonna break that belt with this that, blue that shit. Also <laughs> oh, my Ch- belly Charlie button. says, and I quote, "That shit, that no- shit is no joke." Oh shit, Charlie! Well, Charlie, yeah. I want a well-written double-spaced Charlie, it, twelve point congratulations font report. To, to I want the, a uh, report misses. that we can put on threecountthursday.com. dot com. Yeah, yeah, you can be our man in the field and in the bush. Oh. Um, <laughs> Well, maybe we got to cut the blue shoes. I mean, we've only got a two-hour show here. Nah, man. I, I can, give me that. Give me that. I would love to see what it's like. Can you imagine drive. driving home with that? Yeah. In your fucking steering wheel the whole way home? I could do so many things with my hands. Sit on cruise control. Set the cock and go. Come in my face. <laughs> It'll never oh. get old. Oh, I love the come in my face. Wait, I love, <laughs> I love. Tell you what, I'm gonna find on the soundboard next week, folks. There it is. Fuck me, man. There's another wrestler a long time ago who was like, "If you want to come on me, I gotta find that." Yeah, if you can find that clip, send me the link when you put it on your soundboard. If you want to come on me, <laughs> I broke my back. Come in my face. Um, you said let's just say Charlie says it again, and I quote: "Let's just say they came in handy." During the honeymoon, I bet they came in handy. Hey, hey, all right. I think that's that's enough dick and cum jokes for the week. So I think we're going to wrap this thing up. <laughs> uh, wrap it up. And we're going to uh, end the podcast as well. Um, jokes everywhere. Tim, Tim, where can uh, where can people follow you? Uh, at Not The Tool Man across all platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, if you care. Uh, haven't streamed in a long time i need to get back on the horse but it's twitch.tv forward slash not the tool man um but what's taking up a lot of my time and it's not work related is final wrestling place you can find it on soundcloud soundcloud.com slash final wrestling place uh hour-long podcast talking about the retro wrestling Uh, as mentioned before we're talking about 
um, the nemeses of particular wrestlers um, in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, this week, we may be talking about Bret Hart. Not sure. But um, Final Wrestling Place at gmail.com. Final Place Pod on Twitter. Um, and you can find it wherever you get most of your podcast: Apple, Google, Stitcher, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Spotify, the whole nine. Yeah, don't forget we are live this Sunday, 2 p.m. We'll, yes, sir. We're, we'll remind you that on social media multiple times this weekend. Sauce it. But Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Sauce time, it. we will be here live. Uh, Charlie did also say that uh, that his wife put him over, that's for sure. Uh, Ryan, where can the people follow you? Guys, you can give me a follow. It's R-Y-N and then the word Eagle, R-Y-N-E-A-G-L-E. Uh, to take a moment, I just want to – there was a story around – um, shout out to Bray Wyatt. Story around a, a little kid got bullied. Um, his shirt got ripped. There's no fucking place for bullying in professional yeah, I think wrestling. It was, uh, his pop socket as well. His pop socket got, got ripped off. Brace looks like he's taking care of it. He said, "DM me. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him some shit." So absolutely yeah, awesome. He said, tell him tell him that uh, that he has his six. I mean, he has his back. Right. He has his back. Which is right. just awesome. That awesome. absolutely awesome. Uh, no place for that. No. If if the kid ever watches or something, you know, we're standing behind you. Uh, you know, stand up to bullies. That's that's fantastic. And you're always welcome in the wrestling world. So, yeah, hundred percent. You can follow me uh, at Big Jim Sports on Twitter. Make sure you're following the show. Three Count Thursday, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Go to threecountthursday.com. It's always the number three, never the word three. Uh, you know, you can find our independent show calendar, our merchandise, our collar and elbow, elbow brand deal, and much more. Make sure you're following along with our home network, NGSC Sports, as well as uh, LeapSports.com. They stream us daily. L E E I B sports dot com. Yeah, Charlie says shout out to Gritty for beating up a spoiled brat. Um, but yeah, make sure you go to uh, pa- Patreon dot com slash Three Count Thursday. Catch our pre show, post show, um, and uh, and support us. Everything we do uh, is for all of you guys. So make sure you help us out there. And uh, again, we'll talk to you this Sunday, just a few days away from the Royal Rumble. Until then, stay safe, stay smart, and go for the pit.